Three, two, one. What's happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson. We are back for episode two of Calculated Chaos with 2013 national champion and 2013 Remington Award winner, Brian Stork. Brian, we enjoyed the first episode. Now we've got a second one, and this time we even have guests hopping on with us too. Kenny Shaw. Stork, baby, what's good? What's what up, up, man? What up? There he yeah. is. Oh, but damn, hey. looking good, brother. Hey, I still miss my bodyguards, man. <laughs> right? I'm just, I'm just having an excuse to whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we've got Kenny Shaw with us tonight, obviously. Brian holding the show for us. And then we'll have Josue Matias, also another 2013 national champion, hopping on with us just a little bit later. He's got work duties taken care of, so he'll be joining us later. And we'll have Kenny for as long as Kenny will be with us. And Brian, you, you've loaded up a good amount of film from this 2013 Clemson game, man. I feel like uh, we, we've got a ways to go and we should get started soon. No question. There was a lot. Had to leave a lot out. But, you know, obviously going through it, especially the TV copy, you start to notice a uh, lot of random things that are weird and funny. And uh, so it's a good time. And then obviously getting started here with Jimbo. Um, we're going to see a lot of things you'd probably never notice when you're watching it live back in 2013 and probably with some of the fuckery we, we had to deal with every day. So, right, Kenny? <laughs> hey, I like I like this, though. You you never told me about this, this damn setup. I like it. The, it. We're testing things out, man. Brian came up with the idea and we were talking about doing a game film type show. We don't really do a film breakdown for no game day, Kenny. And so. Brian shot a message to me and I was like, well, maybe we can build something. But a lot of this was done from Brian. So just secretly, though, he's a nerd at heart, Kenny. So don't let him try to fake it out. Hey, yeah, Kenny, start. I work with uh, I'm definitely a football nerd now, man. I was with uh, Coach Sanders at ETSU. So okay. I remember all, all the terminology and stuff is pretty much the same thing with y'all and Jimbo. Mm -hmm. um, so if I start spitting some random shit that you never thought I'd know, that's why. <laughs> but uh, but now I know all that random shit that Jimbo used to rattle off. And you're like, holy shit, that's what that means. So, yeah, he just said it in a little faster dialogue, but NASCAR style, right? Sounds like a NASCAR yeah. driver. Yep. Right. So this is Jimbo now worried about that the game's about to begin and trying to tell the ESPN lady to please shut up. We got a football <laughs> game to play. In a roundabout way, obviously she's easy on the eye, so Jimbo's going to be as nice as possible. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about to kick off, and he's, he's like, what the hell's going on? We're about to go. You can tell he's about to shit his pants. <laughs> See him? Oh, yeah. Rewind it. <laughs> he's got big breath. Yep. Yep. He's like, he, he literally looks like he's about to crap his pants, poor guy. But that was Jimbo, man. He was just always he, like that. Hell, Kenny yeah, knows he more. Tried, he, tried, he tried to change the subject just now. He's like, hey, look over there. Hey, yeah. He's nervous <laughs> as shit. <laughs> we just got to score more points than them, right? Someone's got to block somebody. Jump over somebody. <laughs> you know, remember that same speech he'd get every every single time he went out there? He's just shaking, ready to go, man. He's he's flipping out. You can see the wheels starting to spin. Man, like, I can't imagine on coach football. Stork, Stork, how many times we've seen that game classic on TVs all week? Oh, it's it's unbelievable, man. It's just uh, I, little did we know walking into this. We just you know it was a regular you know season game trying to you know beat an ACC opponent. Little mm -hmm. did we know how historical this game was going to be, and obviously trying to set the world record for the loudest stadium. Um, yeah, you know ever, but. uh at the end of it, you really didn't hear much, did you? I mean, look at this place. These people are going crazy. But mm -hmm. um, just starting off, man, just right off the bat, starting with defense. Obviously, LaMarcus Joyner, straight dog, just unbelievable human being. Um, really one of those dudes that when he says, I'm a fucking soldier. No, he really is a soldier. Like, that's a dude right here. But he ends up making a lot of plays for us. And then uh, they end up motioning the back out of the backfield, getting to a three-by-one set, just runs a quick hitch route up top up here by the receiver right there. Like he, he sits right down that zone hole. I think they go quarters right here. He just bangs on him right here. He catches it. But Marcus Joyner, he's coming downhill. He's about to knock the damn ball out. Just textbook strip, you know, trying to get the damn ball. I mean, this is right off the bat first play. So, I mean, this was a huge, you know, momentum changer. And plays like this just change everything for you. And you can barely tell from this view that, that LaMarcus did anything. But as you see from the other side, uh, it's just an unbelievable effort. Hey. We, I think, I think stuff like that, it it shocks us on offense because it's like, man, them boys came to play, so we we have to match it almost, you know. Right, it makes you step up. It's like I don't want to come out out of this game because we've all been there, Kenny. Like we've been through, like you came in twenty ten or twenty eleven. Ten. 
10, that's right. You came in with that loaded class. Obviously, 11 was loaded too. But, like, we went through some dog days and some games where, like, we just didn't do shit on offense and our defense played lights out. Yeah. Um, and that's just a terrible feeling. So, like, they made us better. There's no question. Yeah. Those practices was – oh, man, iron sharpened iron. Mm-hmm. My God. I mean, think about it. Think how many first-rounders and just, like, dudes we were going against every day. Like, some of the best football players in the freaking yeah. country. And, and even – some of these guys weren't like big names coming to high school, but they developed into some of the best football players in the country. Uh, so I'm obviously it made me better. It made you better and it helped out everybody. Uh, but there, there's definitely some unorthodox shit that I am finding as I go back and like, I watch Jameis, you know, I, I watch a lot of, you know, some of his throws knowing where the ball's supposed to go now, you know, with yeah. the site getting and stuff like that. Oh, there's the sites. Uh, the sites that's, oh. I think that's what, that's what formed my love for the big fellas because you know, my, my meeting time, I don't know if you remember being a slot. I was in there with you guys because I have to learn the sites. And, right. you know, my, not many people know that um, based off um, just terminology and just playing mm-hmm. outside receivers. You know, it's a different world in that slot. Like me, they you'll never know you're working with the old line just as much. Oh, there's no question because you got to change your route and you got to say, you know, oh, you see, man. it takes these two guys to come. They come off the edge to the running back side. Like you have to understand the protection, just like the yeah. offensive line and the running back. I coached tight ends and we were split out a lot, in like 12 personnel <laughs> sets. And I'm yeah. having to teach him sites. And I like, I finally learned what it was. I'm like, yeah, sites, whatever. And then Randy's like, no, like you, you're supposed to turn it into a quick slant here. I'm like, oh, that's what that shit always meant. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, and it changed each week based on what the defense give on a blitz looks. Oh, no question. No question. Obviously, reduced sets, too. You almost turn it in like a two-man yogi, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's oh, how it was with you yogi, guys. Yogi, that's a throwback, man. You bring all yeah. these little yep. turns, man. I'm fresh out of father mode 10 minutes ago, and you throwing back some yogi. That's a, <laughs> hey, hey, that's a throwback. That's a throwback turn. Oh, no question. I, I, I'm going to throw some more at you now, but – my this you know dude I haven't like thought about but I just thought about the other day I was watching this in the morning I actually posted this kind of early just to let everybody know about the show's coming back mm-hmm. but this son bitch run like, this is a lost start Kenny you know this running you know in the eye twenty one personnel mm-hmm. big pad big pad cat cat that's my running boy. through <laughs> hey I saw Chad he came to my camp last year and like you know how it is stored when we all get it get around each other it's like you would think we still suited up with each other. That's how, like, I try to explain to these guys, like, we just, before the TV and the, the, the fans see us hit the field, we already close niche. Like, we already in ass-kicking mode. Like, we, like, gladiators. No doubt. And then, I, honestly, all the old guys say, man, I'd give a, a whole year or three days just to play another game or whatever, and I think about it, like, Fuck Man, man. that would be so much fun to go through just a year long of practice with you assholes again. Just like, Man. You, know, like uh, you hey, sent me a text today with the office, and I was thinking about Andy. You don't know when you're the good days until you're, you know, out of the days, you know. So I thought yeah. about that quote right there. But um, right here is a 21 personnel set. You got no leery motion to the backside, or he went from basically FIB back to the field, mm-hmm. it, uh, just basically a two by one set. All we're going to do is just essentially run lead. That's all it is. Are you in here, Kenny, or are you out? You weren't in the No, I'm out. Right I'm here. out. This the this the strong man. Uh, <laughs> the strong man out. said, hey, that boy O'Leary, oh, he probably the toughest non-O-lineman I probably played with. For no real? question. No question. I mean, the dude, you he literally has nine lives. <laughs> no, he, he – <laughs> Well, he's probably got seven now, but he's got nine, like, at one point. <laughs> Unbelievable human being, too. And just a prick as all get out. I actually met O'Leary at Potbelly's when he was a recruit. And he was oh, up there Lord. visiting by him. He was by himself. I'm sure he knew people. But he's creeping through Potbelly's by himself in, like, 2010. I'm like, look at this kid. He's like a junior in high school or senior or whatever. <laughs> that, hey, that, sound, that sounds very accurate. <laughs> Little I know, we become great friends. But uh, <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh but this probably, this this just sets the tone right here for our offense. Like this was probably day one install, I would think. You know, yeah. we had our Bob Boss checks, all that. Kenny knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, I think we ended up we ended up run like a lead play right here. We're going to combo to the front side backer, me and Josue at left guard and center. Uh, Trey Jackson and Bobby Hart do a good job of comboing this three because this Sam linebacker is going to fold back in and they're going to work to him. O'Leary is just basically anything that comes off that tackle's ass, he's going to cut off. And then I like that, you know, everybody was talking about how good Beasley is, and hell yeah, hell of a player, no question. 
But Cam Irving, that I mean, I'll take that matchup any fucking day, right? And then you got uh, Chad, big pad Chad's coming through here to blow up this backside backer, especially like a lead call or some kind of ISO. And then we're right downhill. And, and obviously, Devontae Freeman sees the whole well. I think this is uh, Rashad Green up here. He's got a push crack to the safety, most dangerous yeah. safety or the corner. That was y'all's rules, right? Yes. I mean, how, how tied in were you guys? Were you guys like second pass, third pass, the mic, all that? We we were, and um, it depends on what kind of look. So some teams blitz the shit out of us. So we had to stay man on. And um, it just – each week it was a different – I guess it was a different journey, which made it fun. You know what I mean? Like – Right. It wasn't well, we like had to work we, to that, though. We, we had to we work did, to get we, to where y'all could do that. Yeah, like we kept the same plays, obviously. Like we run in day one against Clemson, but we also had, you know, those plays that it was like, man, like this is a different, this is a different play. Let's just this execute. is a bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no question. Or the rule breaker, or like, hey, we'll call it this, but it's really not this. And you're just and like, you know, Jimbo, Jimbo not gonna put in the game plan if we ain't perfected five out of five in practice. You know, you know, Jimbo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, dude, I remember hearing some stories from uh, just guys that have worked with them. Don't want to throw names right in the bus. But, like, he would just all of a sudden get in the zone during a game and start calling some shit we hadn't ran in, like, two weeks. But every now and then it would happen, though. You know, we do just we didn't know any better up front. But I know you guys dealt with a lot. And I, I think yeah. Coach Dossie is a saint. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll be serious with that. Just getting you, keeping you guys all straight throughout the week. With man, the I was just talking about changing of things. Sorry. I was on a podcast last night talking about Dossie, like, that dude, you know, once we seen him go uh, toe for toe with Jimbo Fisher in practice, dude, that's when we knew we was like, man, this guy loves us. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I mean, he had to, and he'd been with Jimbo a while too. So I'm sure he yeah. eventually, you know, like a bowling pot. And it takes a lot to, to piss that dude off for sure. Oh, 100%. Uh, glad to see him. He's laying on his feet, though. He's at uh, App State right now, right? Yeah. That's just down the road from Matt right now in Johnson City. Uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful spot if you ever go through there. Uh, boom, North Carolina. But, yeah, this is a hell of a play right here, man. Just just getting through here, shoving the ball right up their ass, first play. I'm all about it. Just setting the tone. Oaksway does a great job getting to the backer. What about Devontae Freeman? Great Devontae, runner. man. Devontae man. Freeman. Woo, we, had, we, had, we had a mean backfield. That was ridiculous. I mean, it was unbelievable. Even fullbacks. I mean, obviously, we had Freddie backing up Chad. He could play, too. year before yeah. that, we had Lonnie Pryor, Chris Thompson. Obviously, James Wilder. Uh, who else did we have? We had Play Carlos. Carlos. Carlos Williams. Yeah. yeah. We had a mean backfield. But, I mean, if you just look at this damn crowd right here, I mean, holy shit. It's, I mean, this goes all the way up. All the way up there. I, I just yep. remember that feeling, Kenny, of like, I feel like everything was just right on top of us. No, yeah. it, for sure. It, yeah, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a notch below uh, NC State's crowd, which is literally right, right by you. Oh, wow. <laughs> NC State, man, holy crap! It sucks we never won over there. Hey, don't do no, don't do no uh, chaos uh, screen for that game. <laughs> uh, no, I got better shit to I'm do, a, man. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna be and, pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I'll go watch. I'll go watch something else, man. Shit, I'll Kenny, watch a UF game. <laughs> Kenny, there and Brian too can answer on this. Jen's asking from YouTube: Was Jimbo's offense as complicated as they say it was? Yeah, you're not. Nobody's playing in their first year. No. Would you agree with that story? Yeah, it's really started. tough to do. It's extremely tough. It, and if you did, you're like, hey, on this concept and, and you know, this set, you go out here and do this one route or two yeah. routes. Yeah, it, it was it was very limited. You're not going to be full-time starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not an X, you're not a Y, you're not a Z. Like, yeah. there's just going to be two <laughs> plays that you just jump in. Because if not, because you're going to see the signal and know where to go and all that shit. Kenny, did the Y and Z always travel together until told otherwise? Until told otherwise, yes. Yeah. And um, that's where it's like it, it becomes more complex when you get into that T, which is that slot, which is like you're traveling with the X, but you're traveling with everybody at any time, any place. Yeah, you got to know every single formation yes. pretty much. And, yeah, the T was the H where I just came from. So a lot of times uh, we had tight ends good enough to be in that spot. And, oh, I got uh, yeah, split out a lot. But yeah, man, it's just so much crap. But the thing I did like about it is you can there's so many different ways you can plug in personnels and people's, you know, oh, it, it, you always have something in a, a good menu to throw people in and, and, you know, certain packages. But this is just a freeze frame right here. of just damn. This shit was loud. 
And it's it was unbelievable, man. It's, it's some of these games too. You get out, you know, off the plane, you finally get home, or you you know just get home after the game, and you can still hear the crowd like in your head ringing as you're going to sleep at night. Dear but, sleep. Yeah. So everybody gets it. It's fucking loud. Cool. But uh, no, it was no, it was loud as shit. I was all the way up there when you were pointing up there doing the marker. I was all the way at the top because they put Florida State's boosters up there, so they wouldn't be close. That's what Clemson loves to do. And then they also put in their own like mute like they'll blast their chance like they'll add speakers to it and Doe Campbell the, the marching chiefs aren't having speakers around them or around the stadium to enhance their chance or anything but that's something Clemson does just a fun fact they will enhance everything their sound make it more louder than it seems and it helps on TV when it's like this never knew that okay. yep you gotta do what you gotta do I mean I, little did I know, damn near exactly a year later, I'd be in fucking Arrowhead Stadium, and they actually would set the world record on Monday yeah. Night Football <laughs> playing that shit. So, yeah, um, but I definitely pumping speakers. Everybody does it, so yeah. it's crazy, man. This is an awesome empty set right here. I love empty right here. I mean, just oh, having KP. I mean, look at this extension. My God, but just catching that damn touchdown. Good eyes by the ref right there. Yeah, he got his feet down. I mean, party in the end zone. And what I loved about us, man, is we were not scared to celebrate. Like, as soon, like, even in practice, we practice celebrating. Shit, all of us. That's the and that's what made you like realize what how selfishness we were. Like, you know, you got teams that you can tell that each guy not playing for one another, but us, it was like we didn't care who ate. Yep, it was. It was like you say, party in the end zone. Party in the end zone, man. We didn't give a practice, shit. Practice was so hard, then that's what folks don't realize. Practice was so hard, so that that way we execute in the games. It was just like a good moment, you know. No doubt. Just reap what you sow, and just finally be like, not have Jimbo, not have Coach Trickett, not have all, any of the coaches oh like on the field. Just <laughs> hey, let us do our thing. Man. That was the best thing about Saturdays, and that truly motivated you to. Yeah. Uh, to do that but like this is an insane catch right here by kb just jumping up i mean he's got almost two dudes like you know near him obviously one dude but i mean look at that extension and then right here i remember sitting in coach trickett's meeting or obviously there I, I was there for five freaking years but uh whenever you got caught full in your arms he said unfold your fucking arms you ain't in goddamn church <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> but, hey I, I remember his little saying it's like it was yesterday <laughs> I mean, old buddies right here, man. They're just they think they're in church. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you can see all these people, man. They're like, oh God, she's scared as hell. She's like, is he gonna catch it? She's scared yep. as hell. But it's always fun to like look in the crowd and see what everybody's doing and yeah. thinking and uh they, they the just shocked right now. They they shocked. Yeah, They're like is this real life? Like KB is an unbelievable athlete. I remember him coming as a freshman from Bell Glade. Like I was like, yeah. is this a tight end? What what is he? <laughs> what does he do? Is he real? <laughs> you know, but he got his act together, man. He got his grades up right. What his act is really just had to get grades and get eligible and uh yeah. turned out to be an awesome human being and yeah. he was fun to play with. But I mean, just I mean, look how high this damn ball is. I mean, only he yeah. can get that. That's the luxury yeah. that Jameis had with him. You know, oh, good man. ball, good ball. I mean, how many times is that practiced in practice? Like you said, oh, we do practice. We in practice. We 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 have that in practice for sure. One on ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And obviously, man. obviously, each guy you have to let them do what their strength is. So we always got to do a jump ball, and you know, each receiver got their strengths. Like that's what that was the part about us that it was like. I don't think nobody was gonna really stop us, and you know, you always get to that. What if y'all play Alabama talks? What if y'all did this? It's like we had so much weapons. Yeah. Like like Storch's name. We we had a hell of an old line. We had a hell of a backfield. Our receiver core is where which which point are you gonna stop? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. No doubt. And even you know, even the backups could play too. And obviously <laughs> guys on special teams. We had young our backups, bucks. Our backups was raw, man. Yeah. And then I think special teams and dude I, Coach Stoops was awesome because he had a hell of a defense like the whole time we were there. But then when mm -hmm. Coach Pruitt came with like what he had and then moving Christian yeah. to like a, a rush specialist, like holy shit. He had like LaMarcus playing Nickel Sam. Whole, like, yeah. And then what? Eddie Graham. Is that you remember Eddie Graham? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Special teams guru, man. Hey, we used to talk shit about him because we didn't know him at first, but we, that dude knew what he was talking about. He really <laughs> did. We uh <laughs> hey Logan, hey yeah. for real. <laughs> We just seen the guy with glasses come in. We, you know, as college kids, you know, you assholes sometimes. But uh -huh. but dude knew what he was talking about. He did. <laughs> Team firsters. Right. You remember that speech he gave about making the oh. travel squad? 
<laughs> and not not being the guy sitting there eating ice cream ice hey, cream jerking off when the he house. said that we <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was his greatest speech. It, it was. I, I'll never forget it. I'm like, well, it's not a bad thought, but yeah, we probably should probably should be on that bus or you know playing going to fucking play. So <laughs> firsters. Sure, how much do you hate NC State? I don't, but they're just damn good. I wish uh, we could have beat them at third place. Never had the chance to. Um, I think I had my first start there when Russell Wilson was the quarterback. We almost won. We fumbled on the four plus four yard line. Tough it's deal. A curse there, almost, huh? Huh? It's almost like a curse there. Curse? Huh? Maybe it, it might be. <laughs> I don't want to think that. Man, it, it's a tough place to play, man. It's only like not that many fans like in a lot of stadiums, but just the way the sound bounces, man, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah good team, um, good for them. But at the end of the day, you know, we ended up being ACC champions at you know one point or another. Hell, the year before 2012, we played them there. Got beat. Yeah. I mean, we beat. We got beat by them, and then we got beat by Florida. Obviously, yeah. I think we had like five fucking turnovers, but yeah. Man, why'd that guy have to bring that up? Dude, that's fucked up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now you're pissed. Man, that's, right. uh, that's two championships right there. They, we were number two in the nation. What's going on? Oh, this guy right here, Clint Purvis. I'm, I'm going to point out some people as we go through here. Um, obviously, this is after the touchdown, but you usually saw Clint because he was our team chaplain. He started out with Coach Bowden, I think, in the recruiting department at one point or another. Yep. He's also you know, a big religious guy, awesome dude. You know, if you were down the dumpster in camp, which he, that's probably when you would talk to him the most, you yeah. know, because Clint was like that. And he would, hey, you ever need anything? I'm here for you to talk, whatever. But this is Clint Purvis right here. Um, great human being, unbelievable soul. Um, I, don't, I think at one point he was not with Florida State, but now I think he's back more often. And Yeah, he um, is. Yeah. All, all the older guys from past generations and everybody tries to take care of him because he's just such an unbelievable human being. Um, great yep. dude. Great yep. dude. Exactly. I don't know. Do you know him, Logan, at all? Yep. Yep. Spent a little bit of time around him when I was younger, actually, when I was more closer with the team, um, but got to be around him a lot. And he greeted me just like he knew me for years and years, but re really good man. Right. No, uh, no question. Just like he knew you for years. how Coach Bowden was, too. But, like, yep. all in these pockets, I'm telling you right now, is like all the, the gum, the candy, some <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, the ranch, buffalo, hey. everything you need is all in here in these that pockets. That is true. I forgot all <laughs> And he might have some more on the inside pockets. He might have had Darren sew some like inside pockets for him or something. But the dude had everything. It was unbelievable. That's the plug. Yep. Yep. That is the plug. <laughs> That's straight up the plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another guy. I don't know if you can point him out here, Kenny. Oh, Red but... Lightning. That's a legend yeah. right there. Hey. Red Lightning. Hey, dude, I just want I just want to see him clocking in the 40. <laughs> right? Hey. <laughs> I don't know. He, that guy had pure adrenaline, man. I mean, he's very serious about too. his job. Very no, serious Logan, no, different people. No, Logan, that from like Stork saying, probably like that 2010 through that whole year, mm -hmm. man, we had some gladiators. I'm telling you, like, everybody off the field, everybody on the field, our academic advisors, like, they will fight for us. You know, it was, mm -hmm. it was one of those type of like clicks and. Red Lightning. I don't know if you remember Stork one time. Like he mushed the guy off on the sideline just to get us up. It, oh. Yeah, I think it was to pick up Devontae Freeman versus Florida. Right? Yes. Hey, it, yes. It, it, we was like, what? There were some other times too. Like Darren, like had to warn him. I think because I, I used to know a guy that uh, worked in that <laughs> in that area. Oh my god, that's crazy. But yeah, this is this is Red Lightning right here, man. But like, watch him just eyeball everybody up. He ain't scared of shit. Now he's from Key West too. He played for the Conks down there in high school football. So, amazing human being. Um, his real name is Frankie. Uh, good dude. But look at him. Look, look at him eyeing up. He just, he just eyed him up, up and down. Yeah. Hey, he <laughs> talked. Like, I know he talked. I know he talked hell of shit on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> look at him eyeing up. Who is – how am I forgetting his name right? that Clemson player? Am I – Receiver? That's not – that's not – Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I was about to say yeah, Sammy. Yeah, that Sammy? Is that Sammy? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's eyeing up Sammy like, all right, let's do this now then. The fact that we held them under 60 yards was Sammy Watkins and um the Martavius Bryant. It's like, man, we was yep. we was bad. Our defense, they they had the shit going on. I mean, you got PJ at the at the top and the boundaries mm -hmm. in the corner. You got Telvin Smith, the linebacker, Terrence Smith. You got D-line, you got who's that sample right there? I think you got Timmy, you got Christian, 
and you got uh, Mario Edwards. But like right here is what really sets the tone. Like your to your question, like why did we hold him to that? Uh, Timmy smacks the shit out of Todd Boyd right here, and uh, like Timmy is like a great way, to, you know, set the tone. You really can't see it, but we end up smacking the shit out of him. But going against that dude every damn day, holy shit, <laughs> man! Hey, that is really it. Practice was the hardest thing. Hell. Oh, no doubt. Like we were set up to fail half the time to humble our ass, you know, and then we just on Saturday is that much easier. But I mean, he just gets right through there. He ends up smacking the shit. I mean, he's got the quickest, fastest hands. I mean, he had, didn't have the longest arms, but, but he had strong arms. But he just got big right Timmy through that fan. damn line like it was nothing. Big, big Timmy fan. When I went down to Kenny Shaw's camp a couple of years ago, I don't really take pictures with players that much. <laughs> but Timmy was one where I had to stop by. Timmy looked at me like, who's this white boy coming up over here just blushing and shit? I'm over here. I need, I need a picture, <laughs> Timmy. I don't ever do this. I wore number eight. In high school, because of you, I would even I would even ravel my jersey up uh, during the games just to show. I definitely didn't have the belly he did, but I was trying to <laughs> at least be as close as I could to Timmy. But just the mentality, tenacity, just I don't give a shit who you are in front of me. I'm going to dominate you, and I just always fun. Definitely when he's fully healthy in that national championship, he was sick that game. But for this game, when you have a Loco. fully healthy Timmy Jernigan in front of you, that, that's, that's, that's when hell. his name Loco. Yep. He's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, it took. I mean, one day we got into it, and it oh yeah, got so used to fucking fight mad. All the time. It took like, yeah, it took him like three or four people to hold his ass back. I'm like, God, I'm just sitting there standing. Like, I'm too tired for this shit. I don't have time for this. Like, we just, you know, I got him. And I probably held the shit out of him. I was a complete douchebag, but I pissed him off. He freaks out. I'm just standing like, man, I hope he doesn't break through all those people because I really don't feel like fighting right now. You know? Hey, hey Storm, we used to, we used to see y'all fighting. Be like, God, man, we needed this. Like, man, we tired as hell. And we got y'all fighting. We like, yeah, keep just keep going, cause <laughs> it, it, sometimes you need that. It gets like a, a fresh boost of energy. All of a sudden, you get chills really? down your spine and shit, and get goosebumps, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, special time and place on that. I mean, you missed it, uh, Kenny. I, I think you're getting recruited. Obviously, when Bobby Coach Bound was still there, I don't know if you saw it or not. Like the way the hills used to be. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember, remember that hill. School? Yeah, so like. Apparently, back in the day, like I was talking to a guy from back then, but even when I was there, my freshman year, Coach Bowden, there would be a fight. Like everybody would start running towards like that area up and down the hills, and just you know the whole team would fight. But uh, yeah, nowadays we, our practices, I think, were so hard we'd start fighting. It's like, all right, let, let's fight and let's just be fucking done with it. Let's move on. But every now and then, man, we needed that shit. Oh. Stay last days with Jimbo just yelling the same shit over and over. <laughs> yep. Look at that. That's a good point here from one of the commenters on YouTube, Brian. Wow, that play was like four against six players, two on the lines. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. It was, uh, yeah. This, speaking of just like random shit, like the thing with Clemson is how trickery and like speaking of like Coach Bowden as well is Dabo Sweeney reminds me a lot of Coach Bowden, just like his overall demeanor and like not scared to call fakes and then yeah. like unbalanced formation shit like that. Like that is, you know, if somebody screws up in a, in a game, he walks over there, pats him on the back. Look, I'm not trying to kiss Dabo Sweeney's ass, but I, I do notice things like that. Um, yeah, he's a good dude. But like right here, like our defense had to deal with uh, un unbalanced formations from Clemson. They had to be on their toes. Like you can see right here, we're unbalanced. You got dude here, you got dude there, and you got him off the ball. And told you got to have seven guys on the line of scrimmage. So he, he ends up motioning him in. But the whole thing is, Lamarcus should maybe be out here because there is nobody on this dude. I know he's not eligible or whatever, but he could always do something back here, or whatnot. But okay. we just ended up freaking bringing the shit right off the edge, and they tried to run a, a guard uh, H counter off, off of this, but with the unbalanced, and they arc him. and uh, But they just had to deal with so many things with their eyes because he could run too, you know. Like, he just – they had so many good dudes too. And I, I think, you know, with what happened to Auburn and Alabama, you know, it probably comes down to Clemson and us possibly going to the national championship. Like, this this might be our national championship right here, at least the first part of it, you know, this night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, just some of the, the – shit they had to deal with and you'll see right here like timmy does a good job just crushing this downhill like he there's nowhere for this run back to go he took his dude that was blocking down on him and shoved him down in that hole and like wouldn't let him off the line of scrimmage while keeping his hands on him free and his eyes able to see in the backfield like that's a good job and everybody just gang tackles him, man like marcus comes in there trying to kill somebody um <laughs> what's new but you can yeah. see they, they bring with marcus and terrence brooks off the edge well, they bring marcus kill someone off the, edge. the what that's all right. Lamarcus, hey. look, look at Lamar. He just his drive is it's just it's like no just other. Never ending. 
Oh, you could never get him tired. It was impossible. I would, I'd be, we'll get to this in a little bit. I'd be curious to see his GPS uh, numbers throughout the years that he was there. Oh, you remember that, man? We used to, we used to tell, they used to tell at the, at a certain point, uh, uh, what was it? Um, Chris Jacobs? Like, Jimbo, you got to let, you got to rest him, man. They, they going. Yeah. You, I think what saved you guys, like before we got the GPS or like, was the fact that you guys were sprinting miles. Yeah. These guys, dude, these guys were literally sprinting miles during practice. So, like, all the reps started to go down a little bit. What was practice like leading up to the game? Shit, man. I've had so many practices since then. I don't remember. But it was just, I think I we just had a visit. Kenny? Do you, no balls do you was on the ground. I know that. Really? No balls were on the ground. No balls was on the ground. Uh, no, and that's including special teams, no punt returns on the ground. Shoot, we was we was locked in. Just we was ready to go. Mm-hmm. Well, I think just coming off the year before, like we knew this was it, man. Because like we knew yeah. a lot of us were going to leave. Like even some of the younger guys that could leave for the NFL, like it was just it was inevitable. And obviously, a lot of our like Jacoby McDaniel, me, uh, some of the older freshmen, or Demonte McAllister, all the guys that redshirted. You know, yeah. we knew this is our last go round for sure. Um, but man, like we knew this is the year because the year before, like we could have done it if we just go undefeated. And then, I mean, this is just nuts. I mean, this whole Clemson place is doing Clemson things and just being loud as hell. I just think it's it's unbelievable to think like, wow, we went and did that, you know. Mm-hmm. And and nobody gave us a shot. I'd be curious to look at the Vegas lines. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I'll I, look. I never I'll used to understand that shit, but now I do. But I'd be curious to see. I mean, obviously, they're probably favored, but we probably won a lot of people some money, and we probably lost people a lot of money. Yeah, even our fans probably didn't know the spread was going to be like that. No, I'm looking. I'm. I'll find it here. And that's right here. It's just a great example too of like between Hosway and Cam Irving. Like we're trying to like echo the play. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, we're echoing the play. Yeah, they're not making out. I mean, they love each other, but not that much. Like, you see a lot of <laughs> what do we got? Here. I love how you're finding this. This is incredible. <laughs> well, this is where the content really starts in here. This is where the you got Wilder is- and Chad right here talking. You got. Jameis seeing the signal. He's probably squinting. I hope he got some contacts at some point. Good thing in the NFL now, he's got the radio. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell to play. It's probably two Roger or two Louie. Imagine that. <laughs> what are you but, doing? I'm just trying to figure out what the damn play is. Somebody's going to tell it to me eventually. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody will. I'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, we're all just trying to get – I think we're going uh, – It's loud as up. hell. Y'all are all having to, like, yell at each other's ear, literally. Yeah. What are you? What do you do at? I mean, wide receiver, Kenny. You're all by yourself off to the side. Are you watching the sideline? Are you watching Jameis if he's getting you? You, you know, it's 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 different. Um, it's different things. But first and foremost, we got to watch Dalsey for the um the personnel. Dalsey okay. is our um personnel guy. So, mm-hmm. you know, you that's how you slow the game down. You you go from personnel first. So that way you lined up. If you lined if you're not lined up and you in a place like that. You you doomed. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You all out of whack. And then you gotta get the play. Then you gotta get the 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 signal. You gotta mm-hmm. get the cadence. Like you gotta. It's a lot of stuff that you have to be ready for. And you no, know, like we we did have sound simulators, which was loud. I, would you admit that story? That, that, oh that yeah, it was, was terrible. Loud. That speaker was loud, but it was the same recording for five years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but it's nothing like. Yeah. Here in Death Valley, so, um, you know, like I said, you, if, just, you just got to be ready. And, and the we, tough part, we, we was good communicators. I will say that. Oh, I remember all the time, all you guys, like y'all would get like all stand on the outside of the huddle, like the O line would huddle, or yeah. they would be kind of close to the huddle, and then everybody else would just be like kind of scattered throughout. Yeah. And uh, the, and the thing about too is personnel and like loud games, it's hard to sub for a lot of personnel too if you want to get really crappy. You know, like you got to. Leave them out there for a few damn plays because you don't want to keep subbing in and out. And next thing you know, you got fucking 12 guys on the field and True. getting your ass ripped. But it's amazing, too, to watch Coach Dossie and Coach Sanders on the sideline. I got a few clips here coming up of that. Just watching them just trying to figure out what the hell Jimbo's going to call next. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> um, it, it's pretty entertaining shit. So right here, this is like uh, – I don't know what you, we called it, but it would be like it's two tight ends and a, a, a fullback and a receiver. You got a receiver out here. We used to call it two tight ends, UTSU. Did you call it? it? Looked, you blue. I think that was blue. It was blue? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we were colors. That's right. I totally forgot mm-hmm. about that. Okay. 
Yeah, so this is a good set here. What we're going to do is, and by the way, Clemson's really good on defense, and Josue is actually working for the then D.C. coordinator uh, or defensive coordinator who is now the head coach of Oklahoma. He's now working for him. So pretty ironic we're going over this game. Yeah, so Jose <laughs> told me to take it. Yep. I didn't even know that. I did not know that. We would have ripped something either. up before this bowl game that they played in. But, yeah, Brent Venables, good good man. I'm happy for her sway, too. I'm excited for him to hop on here, too, with us. Yeah, if you ever figured it out, he's probably texting me, what the hell? But uh, <laughs> this is pretty interesting stuff by these guys, what they end up doing to us. They end up bringing this dude over as, as we motion O'Leary across. And what that happens is, because we were originally working to this linebacker right here, and these guys were going to work to this linebacker right here and cut that all off. But what happens is they bring this extra dude over here in this gap that really, really screws me up and the backside guard from getting to where we need to go and getting through there. So you'll see right here, they bring down another safety in here to fit down in the box. And uh, there's not much we can do. We still get some yards. We get the first down. Like, Clemson just had a great plan just to really dick us. And, like, as O'Leary's motioning over, you'll see, like, why I don't know why they don't come and bring him over here because it's man coverage, you know. But it is what it is. And uh, we, we at times we see a lot of different things because we were that good and they would just, you know, they knew they could break our rules. Mm -hmm. uh, we see O'Leary motion over, line him up. I'm telling you, can see my hand right there at center on the field. See that I'm telling the host, I'm telling uh, Trey Jackson and Bobby Hart, hey, bring this on the backside. You gotta, you gotta cut this gap off. Let's just basically like moron protection is what I call it. Everybody just cut off their freaking backside gap so we can get mm -hmm. through. And then it helps too to have Chad coming through here just to bust up the extra guy we never got to that we we're supposed to. Um, and there's a lot of different variations you can do of all this. But O'Leary tries to get the edge set. Um, Cam Irving's doing his job pretty well. Yep. You know, we still get the first down because, obviously, dude's run hard. Is that James Wilder? Imagine yeah. that. Yeah, that's yep. some bitch run hard. He uh, – I don't think – I don't think he knows what pain is. Like, I don't think he ever felt pain. Like, he, was just <laughs> up, like, he just went hard, man. He's just one of those guys. Did y'all just – did y'all just think of James whenever he came in because he looked ridiculous in high school. I think he was on – on the ESPN magazine cover, just of the low yeah. fat percentage he had. Did y'all just think he was a weight room nerd and want to make it onto the field, or did you kind of see what he had with his dad and the legacy there? We what always seen this. I always seen this drive. Um, I came in with two guys on the cover of that little ESPN stuff. I came in with Jeff Luke, who was a two times bigger than James Wilder, and then we had James Wilder and. James always had a drive to him, you know. So it was – I knew he he would play right off the bat just because, you know, he – he like Stork say, you, he had no pain. I don't – it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> His muscles had upright. muscles. Yeah. He would, he'd literally run upright, though. Like, you couldn't – I'm sure Coach Graham was on his ass, Eddie and uh, Jay Graham on his ass about just, dude, run with your pads lower, you know. But, like, if there's two back power built for anybody, it's that motherfucker right there, you know? Like, mm -hmm. just run downhill, bro. But he uh, – good-ass ball player. Give him a couple plays a game. He, he really stepped up. And then as time came on, he just started playing a lot. Like you said, Kenny, like, the stable was full, man. We had a bunch of dudes. Yeah. And then right here, one of my favorite plays. Like I said, be ground and pound here for a minute. But the fullback died, the big pad, Chad. Not this is a great man. play. And – Again, talking about the Clemson defense, like if you look at that front right there, you're like, yeah, there, there's bubbles there to be had. Like there, there's there's holes to be had right here, and uh, but really that's not the case. Where they get you here is they're going to fit a safety down in here, and like right here, you basically got to figure out we're going to send the tight end and the tackle. Are you going to have them combo this to the safety, or are you going to have them combo this to here? Solo that and work these two to here. Lock this back side because you got this dude going off the edge. There's two different things you can do. Either way, like you can't block them all, but they do a good job of showing you essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven man box, which, you know, it looks too good to be true, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, see a little, see a lot, see a lot, see nothing. Remember that there, uh, Kenny? Yeah. Like, like that still resonates in my head every day. But like the cool thing about this whole fullback dive, and we can hold this extra guy on the back side. Is as we go to hand it off here, you always have that possible flip action. So if he sees and comes off the edge, he's got to honor that. Like you have to. So that's the good thing that holds him and literally prevents him from chasing this down backside. And obviously, we got what one and a half, two yards right here yeah. to get going. So what needs to really happen is this needs to combo here. 
to work to this backside backer. Bobby could lock on to this backside guy. We could hold him with the fake pitch by this dude. And right here, we could essentially almost go from a triple to a deuce. When I say deuce, basically a, a combo between the tackle and the guard working to here. And do you want safety? You come down and make the play. I dare you. Yeah. So there's different ways to skin the cat. Um, but, like, definitely the way we end up blocking it, we all end up coming down, and we have two guys off the edge, and that's not a great way to get it done. But a lot of times we did things that was, again, unorthodox, and we got away with some shit, too, because we had good-ass football players. But it's a great job by Big Pad Chad. Mm. Run this ball downhill. Yeah. I mean, good luck tackling that dude. Mm -mm. But you can see like the right guard and, and or excuse me, the right tackle tied in. Like Bobby wants to work back to that backer that's making the tackle, but he also wanted to work to that safety that just fit down in there as well. Um, so that's where you get caught in the catch twenty two. And like thing is about Bobby Hart for a young guy, like he was so smart. He was one of the the, the freshmen that could really pick it up quick and was able to play. I think he started the game at 16, 17 years old. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, he's a really smart dude. Really intelligent. Um, I love having him out there. Bobby and I didn't always get along well, but, like, when it was game day, we were ready to go. We were always, you know, going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing about our team, Kenny. Like, not everybody always got along at times, but nah. like, you just duke the shit out. Like, nowadays, kids are soft. They don't want to, like, call a dude <laughs> out. They'd rather just go home and tweet about it. They really like, – they real deal beef on and off. It's like, wow. Like, you, you're you, coaching you don't want to win. Right now, right? Are, are you coaching right win. now? Say it again. Are you where are you coaching at right now? No, I just do my own thing in my in my foundation. I so I do my own development. Okay, gotcha. I didn't know if you're coaching high school or anything because mm -hmm. I was like, damn, you probably see it every day, like man. You know. But I do see it, and it's like, man, I just I tell them the truth story, and I ain't gonna say what I be telling them on 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 right. The, on, <laughs> they need to hear I, it. I but I tell them, you know, it's you can't wake up one day and want to be D one, you know. No, it's got to be something that you just work at every damn day. Correct. You know, it's a mindset you have, for sure. You might have heard this saying uh, before, Kenny, never pass up an open hawk. I don't know. Did you ever hear that? Did, did you yep. guys call the hawk with the outs and the uh, more outside release? Yeah, we called it more. Okay, you called it more. What did you guys yeah. call the concept with the four step outs by these guys on the inside? Did you all call it hawk or no? Yeah, we called it hawk. Okay, yeah. Well, anyways, I've been listening to Randy for three years, so I, I hear never pass up an open hawk. But, like, based on all we're talking about, is they're running out, he's running out, and then the out, dude on the outside is running a more mandatory outside release. Mm -hmm. And then I think Rashad's got a quick slant. What did y'all call quick slants? Was it Tulsa or was it something we else? Called it, he's called it Tulsa or it, it changed based off how hard the cornerback played because sometimes we'll just, we'll just do a one-stepper and one call step. it a now. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. But we, yeah. um, all the route is that's why I say it's so complex because it's like you can run it out, but you have to read it, mm -hmm. right? Do you hook it up and turn it out? Yeah, you hook, you hook you it up. It's like, you gotta, it's like you got to run a damn route and really peep the corner and what the safety doing mid yeah. route. Safety's high, corner lies, don't run, in, don't go get covered in the uh, cover two corner, you know, correct. Yeah. Man, I've, I've seen a tight end or two get smacked right there. And then I'm, I'm like, what does that mean? Like, when I first got there, basically, I just had to learn by trial and error. So, I was an offensive lineman trying to figure out this fucking pass game. So, <laughs> it was it's tough. Like, it, it's awesome. It is awesome for sure. But, yeah, like right here, this is a, a you know, five-man protection. We're an empty three-by-two. They bring the mic off the edge. And then O'Leary just gets oh, that ball. Four step out. I mean, I, this is a simple play just for getting easy yards. It's, it's really your day one install, too, for your quick game. Uh, love it. And I, I love O'Leary wearing no gloves. He's got, like, one yep. little pad from the bruise, whatever the hell he had, probably rug burn from his motorcycle he accident or something. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say leading, leading receiver for this game, too. Your leading rusher was Devontae Freeman, Nick, Ole Nick O'Leary. Oh, Nick, Nick did have that little pop at, like, the yep. one-yard line. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, he almost took it to the crib. Oh, yeah, that this he was, was a fun game. That was a little razor throwback or whatever it was. I think we call it a razor. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Something like it was. This is a tough look right here as well. Let me see. Let me make sure I got the right look. Oh, yeah. So this is a good job by Host Sway and the left uh, left tackle uh, Cam Irving. As you'll see right here. Basically, we're sliding. We're already. This is the slide side. This is the man side, or excuse me, the dual side. 
they're dueling one, two, to three. Whoever out of these three come, you take the most inside, dangerous inside out, one and two, no matter what, however it plays out. Dude walks up right here, they would post it down, let the wise guy go. That's just like day one, five-man uh, protection right there. But it's a good job by them not getting picked off. What I like about uh, Cam is he ends up just driving that post on the defensive end. He ends up basically like – he goes a little too far afield, but he's square enough right here with the shoulders and hips that he can at least bump that and knock his ass over. El Sway does a great job of just chipping that over to him as well. Not clean, not pretty, but obviously O'Leary catching this ball on the fourth step out. And this is kind of dangerous right here. Like whenever it you is. come up and you realize you're matched by the uh, – whoever that backer is, you realize yes. you're going to be matched by this dude. You got to break out negative. Like the term is flat to negative, so this dude can't undercut it. We get lucky as shit. He kind of flattens it off, but we still get it to him. And then obviously James has got a rocket arm. So like that, a lot of talent sometimes overrides things, that, you know, in certain moments. Mm -hmm. But great throw and catch here. Great throw and catch. And it's Christian drink. Christian's just going out for a block right there, right, on that play. But Kenny's running around just in case, too, if – if James is there, or is this all directed on Nick O'Leary just getting the ball to him? It, no, it was all it was all out routes with a yeah. with a more on the outside, and you know we we just you go with who got the best leverage, and you know it's like like Stork said, sometimes talent outweighs <laughs> what's really going on because of that's supposed to be a pick six, but mm -hmm. yeah, he has a rocket arm. Just got it right in there. And then this is probably – Kenny, this is one of my favorite sets. I, did you all call this deuce or something like that, this deuce. formation? Yeah. I, I like these sets out of 11, 10, four wide. Um, what did you all call the two-man Yogi? Did you all just call it Yogi or did you all call, call it something else? We just called it Yogi. Yogi? Gotcha. So right here, this is where uh, Kenny just starts to get his hair on fire. Um, deuce. Pretty good shit right here. I mean, it's easy throw and catch. Out route, getting vertical. I mean, the thing about you, Ken, is you had shakes, dude. Like you had the shakes, you had the quicks, you had the the intelligence to. The more I watch it, sit it down in the hole and just understand leverage and attack leverage. Hey, Sid, I had to learn after the Oklahoma hit, man, in 2011. You know, you, you, you learn, uh -huh. you learn, you learn the defense. <laughs> we literally were talking about that earlier in the production meeting, Kenny, about you getting hit. At that time, and I didn't know Brian was one of the first players. You definitely didn't notice it at the time, but Brian being one of the first ones over there to check on you. I was hustling downfield, and I saw Brian, him. I was hey, like, "That's why you're my boy, man." Dude, uh, I'll never forget that look. I just, yeah, I, I still think about it from time to time. I was like, I can't believe I saw that shit. But um, they, 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 they cheated us, man. That was we should have had a touchdown. <laughs> Dude, mm -hmm. that was a rough week. You want to talk about a fucked up week? I remember that week. That was a rough <laughs> week. That was my first game ever playing center, too. And just like, oh, God. Just like 3,000 steps later trying to figure it out. But I mean, Oklahoma is good, man. They yep. were damn good. But they that sure was all the of things. Let's hey, who's that? Oh. oh, he knows football. Oh, yeah. We got football on. Oh. Who's that, Kim? What's his name? Oh. <laughs> oh. So you took him to a game yet? Look. There he is. It's weird as shit. I never taught him how to do the Florida State chop, and he does it. Right off Just the bat. Naturally. Right off the yeah. bat, natural. In the blood. Class of what, 20, 30-something? So one of my partners, he made him a onesie. He's class of 2043. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. Tell you what. Who knows where I'll be by then. But he'll be a good football player, I'm sure. They go run and get tired. How many kids do you have now, Kenny? Say it again. How many kids do you have now? That's my first one. Oh wow! You and Stork. Stork, you got man. one Stork. I just had a baby girl. Her name's uh, Everly. She uh, was born December thirty first, so I got that tax credit, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, Stork, man, make sure, you hit, make sure you hit my line, man. Those fathers got to talk. It's a different. Oh, uh, no doubt. It, it's uh, it's a different world, man. It's different. Uh, we, everything we just. It. Just, yeah, no We doubt. need it. Everything changes, man. That's unbelievable. The little poop machine just turns, melts your heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. But No, I just want to show this. This is a great throw and catch. And obviously, Kenny does a great job of rolling his eyes and head around. And I know you don't want to listen to this shit, Kenny. Listen to O-Lyman talk about you running routes. But uh, uh, hell of a job. Those little routine plays, man, that's why we got so good. Yeah. This, is a, a, this is a shot of Dossie and Randy trying to figure out 
what the fuck are you going to call next, Jimbo? So you, you can see him right here. Look at Dossie. Yeah. <laughs> Dossie. Hey, what you got? What personnel? <laughs> Randy's listening. He's like, all right, what are you going to call? And like half the time, Jimbo get all, I want left. I want L. I want R. No, I want R. And he like, so Randy be going back and forth between L and R and just jacked all up. <laughs> But, and look at Vic. I see Vic. Don't <laughs> squeeze. <laughs> no, look at my boy Jay Graham right here. Oh What's yeah, that? he's listening. Oh man, running Locked back. In. What was Actually, his name? What? Honestly, I damn, I forgot. Who, Coach Graham? No, right there. We got this guy right here. The running backs coach. Yeah, what was his name? Yeah, so there's Eddie Graham, and then there's Jay Graham. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So we went from Graham to Graham. Nah, I remember I used to pick on Chad. I said, boy, hey, that, that's your daddy. Like, I said, hey, I, I, I said, boy, that's your daddy, man. Hey, Chad hated it. Oh, my God. That's unbelievable. I, I actually worked – you know, Randy recruited him at, at – you know, played for him at Tennessee and all that. So when I was at ETSU, I worked with Jay Graham. I learned punt and all the special teams from him. Uh, great dude, though. Great. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to hear all their stories over time come out. And, uh, to hear all the shit that like would go on that we never really knew. But here, a, a, another shot that, of us not guarding anybody. And we get away with it. <laughs> Look at that blitz. Again, yeah, they're bringing the Sonic. They're bringing this, the Sam Strong Safety. Stoops didn't care, man. I'm telling you, this is Pruitt. This no, is Pruitt. 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 Yeah, Stoops, Stoops has gone off to Kentucky. He yeah. said, "Fuck y'all, I'm done with you." Like, uh, yeah. I'm going to do my thing. Hey, good for him. He's still there. Pruitt was a master, like caller. I will say that he had to be. Think about who he worked for forever. Yeah, true. Dude, I can't, I can't fathom like the the ass chewings and like the pressure that he's constantly under. So we probably got the Jimbo. He's like, this is a fucking walk in the park. Yeah, you know, but remember, I'm not trying to shit on like you know. I get it; he's the head coach of, of Florida. But remember how remember how Billy Napier came for like two weeks in the off season in the very beginning when Matt yeah, Drill started. Yeah, that was that was weird. And then he just he left. I think he had a chance to go back to Alabama, so he did. And you know, Trickett, you never knew what he'd tell us. He'd just say shit that motivated. It's like, yeah, he left because he didn't think we could win a national championship. He <laughs> thought Alabama could, so he left for them. We're like. Not- yeah, you never okay. knew what trick and shit talk was. You didn't know if it was true or if it was like just motivational, but it was it was always some some kind of Jedi mind shit, mind fuck yeah. trickery to get you to do better. So hey, whatever man, works, love, it works, man. Him, man. It worked. But yeah, they bring the Sonic again. This is unbelievable. They bring the Sonic off the edge. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to do. I think he's reading this backside RPO, but Christian Jones right here is uh, he's dropped out in coverage. He just peeled off right here because they brought this off the edge, but nobody's out here. It's a good thing he's in pistol and the quarterback's eyes are facing this way because if not, like, you know, we got mm-hmm. something right there. But it's a good job by them. I mean, just Marcus getting down there, causing the fumble. Mario Edwards. Big boy. Hey, they didn't know what to do. Big boy yeah. touchdown. When this was going on, I was like, oh, my God, this this might get, like, out might of hand. Get Good job for Mario, like holding on to that thing and, and you know not getting. I forget who it is from the Cowboys. It's an old, it's an old freaking game, but it happened to him. Uh, but the dude ended up batting it out. But I mean, just party in the end zone, man. I mean, just got a bunch of crazy dudes. Look, join you all up in there, Christian Jones. This is my favorite. This is I just love watching these fans, man. I mean, I'm sure these are good people. I'm not trying to shit on them as human beings, uh, but this guy's like with his hands over his head. We're fucked. This dude, he's just like, damn, I don't do it with myself. But I do honor his, uh, his, uh, I guess, his mentality to move on to the next play because uh, there's some pretty funny shit right here. He's just like, fuck it. I'm just going to eat my damn peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> he's bummed out. But this dude, right here, you, you see. All the, this is all the first quarter for LaMarcus Joyner. Uh, I mean, out yeah. of a defensive back and making that much of an impact. And, and it's all physical. It's not in coverage. This is all just him being a physical safety at his size is, was ridiculous. And a quarter and a quarter the impact that he made. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. And, like, I think they're talking right here. Like Marcus, yeah. Marcus is like, I fucked up. He's like, I fucked up. I probably shouldn't have came off that edge. Because you can see Prue going, you're okay, buddy. You know what I mean? Like, some, <laughs> like look at this. You're good. Like, who is guarding this dude over here at the number two receiver spot? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how, how, how are we getting away with this right here? Darby's on a guy out on the outside. Yeah. And no one's in. Get the corner and the safety right here. I mean, they this supposed to roll down. I, I don't know. LaMarcus is a safety. This is the Sam. You know what I mean? Because you got your Mike and, and your Buck and you got your Will. There's a three down front. I know so they, used to put, they used to put LaMarcus at some funky position. Dude, yeah, because earlier he was at the nickel Sam spot, and then now he's yeah. at the strong safety spot, and they're bringing the, the Sonic. So I just thought this was some crazy stuff, and I can't believe they got away with it. Um, but, hey, hey, I'm all for it. Good for Marcus, man, just being physical. So it's just amazing. Like, he wasn't the biggest dude, but he was rocked up. I remember oh, during the sure. summer, he was being there looking by himself, like, all the time. Like, man, the Marcus, he had a different drive. How many times did you ever see him out at the club, Kenny? No, you know what's crazy? I said that last night on the podcast. I, he, obviously, he's in my class. So, you know, you have a different uh, bond with who you come in with. And, you know, um, Stork, as we have children now, you know, LaMarcus came in with a child. And yep. just imagine his drive, like his why. He's got that daddy strength, man. It, it's it, something it different. Made, and it made sense. It's like, man, you can tell this dude's playing for something. He d- and yeah. he doesn't he doesn't do the social media stuff either. Oh, he we would have to beg him to go out. He probably went out three times in four years. Yeah. Yep, and still still in the league. I need to look up where he's at. I'm pretty sure he's still with the Raiders, but could be wrong on maybe the Jets. I think he, now he's floated around a few plays. He's kind of turned into a journey guy, but like he can play every single freaking position in that backfield. You know. So, yeah, he's with the Jets now, which. Also joins Jermaine Johnson, former FSU defensive end, but that team Good that's form. trying to rebuild maybe could add on Aaron Rodgers there. See what happens. That's right here. They bring the same exact blitz. So if it's <laughs> broke, don't fix it, right? They literally bring the same exact blitz. What they're going to do is they're going to run an inside zone here to the right. Clemson is. What the problem is they don't have a, an answer for LaMarcus off here. So usually the tackle goes here. The guard works this. The center and backside guard work to the front side uh, backer. Backside tackle, B gap to backside backer, unless he closes in there at the backside end. But this tackle, you'll see, he's going to like paralysis by analysis, take one step, stop, and like, I don't know who the fuck to block. And right there, we're going to make the play again just by confusing the shit out. Of him. But again, where is anybody? <laughs> like, where is that dude? Like, there's nobody out there on it. It's unbelievable. But uh, we get away with it again. You'll see it. Watch the right tackle. He doesn't know who to block. You can see him right there. Do I block by Marcus or, I, you know, do I get Brooks coming off the edge? Screwed. So, I mean, good job by Pruitt just scheming it up, making it work, bringing the Sonic, dropping, you know, the will out, and good for them. Chris Casher, haven't heard that name in a while, huh? Oh, man. Bring back memories. <laughs> no doubt. That goofy son of a bitch. That was another good. We, had, we had some characters, man, didn't we? Just looking back at it, just all the <laughs> crazy random memories. Hey, if we did have a 30 for 30, that would be very entertaining. <laughs> My God, wouldn't it be? Just some of the sh- hey. some of the shit that like nobody like knows about. Like, that we just got no, away with oh, some good things, you know. But, man, I don't even know where to start with that one there. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be a separate podcast type one where we're all sitting together. And this right here is I mean, it ended up getting a PI by Lamarcus. Like it's it's really nitpicky. It's bullshit. Like Lamarcus plays hard as hell. I know yeah, Mark Jalen Rams right now. Yeah. But and this guy right here, just I want to point out to one of my roommates. You remember Justin Bright there, uh oh, Kenny? Jay Bright, yes. Dude's out in Arizona right now. I think he's a financial advisor or something like that, working for somebody big. I see him golfing, hiking all the time on his uh on his stories and stuff. But Jay Bright was a ball to himself. Yeah, hell of a dude. Um, you know, obviously concussions caught up with him just like it did me, but yeah. Um, super sharp, but I think he realized, like, man, like, he, he knew ball, but I think he's like, screw this, I'm gonna go make money, you know, yeah. doing more financial stuff and enjoy my life a little bit because coaching's tough, man. Like, ask that dude, I'm sure he'll tell you all the shit he's been through now, you know, with mm-hmm. Tennessee and then obviously just bounce around different places throughout the years. Mm-hmm. But hell of a ball coach, dude. Some people shit on him, but I think he's a hell of a fucking ball coach. So, I, I do too. I know him per- you know, not, I'm not best friends with him, but like we've seen him in person. Some people just say, Oh, I hate this guy. Well, like, well, do you really know him? You know, have you ever sat down and talked with him? So, yeah. But what I love about LaMarcus here, this is awesome. Just watching him. Hey, throw it over here. This is exact next play. Hey, hey throw Lamar- it over here. Hey, Let's so Logan, Logan, you remember what I was telling you? Like, 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you, every, every, they say, who did you struggle with in practice or who you go against? It's, I go against LaMarcus every day. That's why it's like I have no choice but to get better in practice because yep. it, it's competition, you know, and, and you can just see it in him. I, you have to come with something different. You can't come with the same thing. I was going to say, I learned from you talking about him. having you on the podcast so many times. I always think any kind of wide receiver that came through that time frame, Joyner was the one that gave him the most fits because how many times you told us on mm-hmm. Hear the Spirit, it's ridiculous. And, and I, I have to I have to get that for you guys, LaMarcus on. I'm going to reach out to him. I'm going to get him on. And hopefully he say the same thing because we don't have some battles. And as you see, that guy, he don't back down from nothing. We got to get him on the show at some point for sure, man. <laughs> If you can find him, he's probably under living under in a rock somewhere, man. He's 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 no, caveman like sometimes. Him. We can find him, man. That's awesome, man. I hope we get him on here. But I just love it. And you can see, like, I don't know if you guys can tell on this film because the quality of it, but yep. there's a guy back here just laughing his ass off watching Joiner just walking and going to talk to somebody. Now that's today. that's David Plack. I think that's Florida State's fan director. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. You can tell he's laughing at Lamarcus like, my God, that dude's an animal. Oh. He knew, he knew, because he's over there, right, with the program. He's he's with, just, yeah, yeah, he's looking he's at him chatting. His head like, he's you know. smirking and going to talk to. He's talking to. That wasn't someone from the administration for FSU. Look at that sneak you know, Look at a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, cowboy. I'm gonna say it's the, the the corner in the wheel, right? Yeah, corner in the wheel, or you call it cow, whatever. But uh, bring the corner. You see the safety probably off the hash if you're that X receiver. Mm-hmm. Bring that off the edge. But the, thank God, again, we luck out. This is going to this dude, number seven, the receiver. Look, they like you're about to be the cowboy, and it looks like Taj Boy thinks he's about to break out. You know they what confused. I mean? And, like, they're just not on the same page, just from what I can see. It looks like he should be over the top here breaking out because the ball goes right yeah. there, almost like in, in Ohio or something. Yeah, in our system, that's a point. Gotcha. Yeah. Which, gotcha. which you never got. So it's like you don't know who's wrong right here. <laughs> Yeah, it could be him or could be him, you know. But it's just there's all kinds of shit. Like, but you got the perfect leverage just to break that out and, and take it. But again, he just ends up taking it and breaking it in, which you know maybe you can make that throw. But again, not on the same page. And like you said, communication. It's got to you got to have it. If not, you're screwed. But, but hey, I'll take their fuck ups all day long, right? <laughs> <laughs> Man, he wasn't even thinking about it. And then right here, is that uh, is that Jalen? Jalen covering, yeah. Dude, good for that guy, by the way. Um, he was he was fairly quiet as a freshman, but he's yeah. really grown he's into himself. His way in. Yeah, and now he's just one of the best, probably to freaking do it right now. You know, yeah. So good for that dude. Um, random fact story. I don't know if you remember this trainer right here. His name was Dylan uh, Kenny. This guy right here, a little short guy. He worked mostly the O line, I think. Uh, but he was always around for a long time. I was there. Long story short, two years later, um, for whatever reason, I'm playing right tackle. We're playing the, the New York Giants. I'm just having a damn day. I'm out of position. Shouldn't be there. Yeah. I think we're in the game with six little linemen. He comes walking on during a TV break to, to uh, give water to the Giants D-line. I'm like, holy shit, dude. I was like, I know you. He's like, hey, yeah, I know you. And, like, instantly I, was like, I felt more comfortable just seeing a fellow Seminole. So uh-huh. hey, I just thought that was – Hey, that's awesome. It's yeah, pretty cool. Funny, random I forgot, I forgot we all had to sign like water people. We did. We did. It's unbelievable. Like, dude, we had it really good, Kenny. Like, I've been multiple places now. We had it really good. Like, as far as athletic training, strength staff, like, you yeah. know, we'd bitch complain about, you know, other things. Like, mm-hmm. we had it really freaking good. You just, it, it takes yeah. going to other places to really figure that out. But, ooh, this right here is where, uh, this is one of the, uh, if you think Clemson 2013, this is the play I think of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no. Oh, no it's, it's in there. oh, not yet. Not yet. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I, I got it's excited. I, it's, it's coming up, though. But I really like this play right here. Um, everybody's just basically zip protection, sprinting down the line, moving the pocket. I think Kenny right there, you're just trying to clean it out, right? Yeah, you're just trying fake to. Fake jet sweep. Fake jet sweep. And now, do you rail this up? Yeah, I rail it up to be an outlet. And he was, was he probably running a post? He's probably, then, yeah, it's like a, a fake slip from O'Leary. Gotcha. I forget what we called it. I don't know. But we I don't think we ever knew. I think we just blocked Razor. 
But Ooh. good job by Jameis just getting the ball out to him and O'Leary getting out there, getting the first down. Here's another good deuce set. Big deuce guy. Now, I have a question on this, Kenny. Did y'all call the these double moves shakes and snakes? Yes. You were running the snake. Did he think you were running the shake? Oh, he got it missed. He got it wrong. And you know, we don't get too many double moves. So it's like right. it was, you see how open it was. And you know, I, I was like, man, you know, and that's the thing I did like about Jameis. He he always took accountability. Okay. He, he did. He was not scared to like step, even as a young buck. Like, like he's a young buck and just he just stepped oh, up and you, yeah, I oh, it up. Hey Logan, look, this this is you lick your chops on stuff like this. You're like, man. Look at the leverage you're gonna have too. I mean, right. my yeah. god. Damn. Were your your shakes and snake, or I guess it would be a, a snake, were they eight threes? They were it was eight either threes. eight three or six three. Okay, I got you. We took them down to six threes when we went to the FCS level just because our guys weren't like your dudes. But we watched yeah. we watched so much of y'all's film. So what's trying a, to teach the stuff? What what's an eight three and a six three to people? It's just that... basically steps. You go eight steps, three out, uh, okay. back to the post. Gotcha. Yeah. So you got eight up, three out, and then based on this dude's leverage, once you collect yeah. them, you get them. Your, the goal is to try to get them down up underneath here so you can get back around. Okay. You know what I mean? But if he just stays inside, like right here for the whole time for whatever reason, you just kind of sting it up. Right, Ken? I mean, I don't know if that's yeah. how they taught you guys, but uh, it, it, it's good shit. But I, I was wondering what happened here. Like, how the hell did they get us? Now, protection wise, they got our ass here pretty good. They know we're sliding for this guy, center here. We're sliding for here. So eyes are there. And what happens is usually there's an ass pat you'll see by the uh, right guard. Ass pat tells the running back, Hey, I'm posting down this A gap. I'm taking your guy that originally was yours. Bobby doesn't get it. So Bobby's setting out. If he gets the ass pat, Bobby's got to post this. And this isn't a great matchup, but they end up putting the running back on the end. But when we screw this up, because we probably shouldn't have ass patted it. I mean, I understand why Trey's doing it, but if he's going to do it, everybody's got to know. Like, they got to set this. And then right here, Devontae's got to step up and take this. But. What they're trying to do here is pick the shit out of the center. They're trying to take him here to pick my shoulder, occupy my eyes with him, and then wrap around second to get us all on, this, on different levels. Um, so they got they got us pretty good here, and then we screwed up a little bit with the ass bat. Uh, but, Damn. So just bad by everybody. Could have got a high-low here with Devontae and Bobby because Bobby's like, oh, shit, we ass patted. In drops out, so he just sinks back in. And Oh, look at it. Look at it, Logan. <laughs> yep, I'm watching. <laughs> Damn. I mean, Woo! look at all that grass that you have there, Kenny. Man, oh, well, that's easy. Six. Six. You know, you know sometimes that. it's like you watch the film later and you still don't, because our team's so close niche, you don't even be mad for long. you like, man, like, we we aiming for something bigger than us. And that's that's what I, I guess I love that end of the day about us. Look at Jim. I mean, look at James. What's Jameis doing? He's so pissed. Ooh. He's like, what the I, like, I don't know if he's mad. I couldn't tell if he's mad at you, mad at himself. No, I think he was mad because uh, he heard one thing, but it was signal something else. It was it was something. It was a lot. It was more than just me and him off miscommunication. It was it was like a mixture. I want to say Dossie signal something. Oh God! Mm -hmm. would, would Dossie add on to like just help you guys out once he got the personnel in? Would he kind yeah. of help out the concepts? Yeah. Yeah. That can happen, and if, if you, you asked Randy if he screwed it up, he'd tell you, "Hell no, I, I'm perfect." So, uh, he, he Randy probably didn't screw it up either. <laughs> <laughs> what are you What are you pointing at when you're doing this? Because I know a lot of people watch this and are watching the centers in games. What are you pointing at, and what are you saying? So when you hear me say the mic, like that, basically the mic tells everybody who they're working to with He's the offensive to line a lot tied in. Too. Yeah, it means a lot to you guys too. Like, hey, if they bring the mic and this guy, it could be a sight too. Yeah, well, you know, and, it's, turn and it's also in a run game. If he points at a mic, I don't touch him. And it took me probably three games to get that. Three games and, and two cuss outs from Coach Trickett to, like, <laughs> understand it. Because, you know, that's pretty complex. You got to learn in the run game and the pass game. And if they point to Mike, I do not touch him. Okay. Yeah. So if we were going to run inside zone to the right here, yeah, like we would tell Kenny, all right, that's the mic, and if Kenny I was right up. here, he blocks first past the mic. Yep. Okay. So that that lets him know, or if he's you know, I don't know if they ever got into the backside stuff, but that I means it's the same thing. 
Mm -hmm. uh, just find who's front side. Always identify your right, Momo. Hell yeah, Momo. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Momo, you know what I miss is Momo's pizza. I think so. Tommy in here. I think we want Momo's pizza. Dude, right? Momo, Kenny Shaw Momo abs. abs. Kenny, do you still have the Kenny Shaw abs? <laughs> <laughs> still raw, I man. Some, I got some dead abs. <laughs> some, dad, some dad abs. <laughs> oh, it's tough, man. It's tough getting in shape. Kenny, have you gained a lot of weight since you've been done playing? Oh, hell yeah. I got. It's like a happy eating weight. <laughs> right? Are you married now? I'm soon. How about you? I, I am married, so yeah. Being fat and happy, it, it, it's a tough battle to fight every day. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, happy. Brian yeah, happy. Brian was talking about that he doesn't know what to do anymore because he actually had to buy a gym membership what? a couple of weeks ago. I finally broke down. Yeah, I'm not coaching anywhere. I moved back to Johnson City. My wife's an associate athletic director here at ETSU. I yeah. had to go get another job elsewhere, but I came back here. And, uh, yeah, I had nowhere else to work out, so I went and bought a gym membership. So I'm working out with old people and stuff. So <laughs> It's been cool, though, man. I've been making friends, you know. <laughs> nah, that's good. Get out there, get some random friends. Right? Yeah. Who would have thought me with friends, and who would have thought me with the damn microphone? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I would nobody, and nobody. I was like, what the fuck? But, oh my god. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's get rolling on this. I, I think we actually do run inside zone here to the right. I can't remember. Nope. There's some other play. This is a hell of a throw. <sighs> right here again, just KB making the damn play. Unbelievable. And then just quick shout out to a couple dudes, man. Um, people that really affected your daily life um, on the strength staff because we see them more. Like you see, uh, this is Brandon Sanders. We all call them Red. Oh, Red. This is, this is Lou. Red, uh, this is a, one of the toughest dude, little guys I've ever met. I can't remember his name. He actually went to the Bud's Navy SEAL training and uh, got oh, What was uh, his name? I can't remember him. He was a man, he's man, a Tallahassee I'm, kid. Man, I'm reading about Bud's right now from the little David Goggins guy. Oh yeah, that that guy. Yeah, he's, this dude's unbelievable. And then uh, right here you got uh, where is he at? Oh, Bruno. Bruno is now a cop or a, a sheriff in Palm Beach County right now. Did you know that? Bruno. <laughs> yeah, he got like promoted, all kinds of shit. And you got Geronimo right here, who is now the uh, athletic trainer for football at UT uh, Tennessee. Yeah, so, you know. And he got there because of Pruitt, and he's just been there ever since. So a lot of good people right here in this shot. Oh, and then you remember Schleeman, Kenny? Yeah, Schleeman. I talked to him the other day. He do some cigar stuff. Dude, yeah, he's th this guy is you know comes from an entrepreneur family and just very creative. Um, we used to call yeah. him the arts and crafts guy. He'd put all our playbooks together, have all the highlighters, pens, pencil, grind it. Oh, oh, they were all up there grinding. But he, a great dude, great guy to sit down and probably have a beer with, you know. Yeah, uh, but yeah, a lot of good people in there getting after it. Uh, again, it's like you Ooh. said, a lot of good people everywhere. KB, KB is just. Put it on yeah. that DB. Straight mm. beast. Did you ever say were you a talker, Kenny? In games? Not really. No. I don't I don't remember. I was you being more that I way. was more of a I give you an asshole smirk. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that might get under your skin a little bit. I don't know. Kenny, you yeah. weighed like what, 165 pounds when you were playing? Shit, if that. But I, man, I wouldn't talk shit either. <laughs> but you know, that makes you more frustrated when you don't got a guy to talk. It's like a different, it's like a, I like to get on your skin different ways. No mm. doubt, that, that'll do I got, it too. I got y'all. I got y'all fuckers to back me up. If I if I was a shit talk, I got y'all to back me up. <laughs> you bet your ass. Adam O'Brien's coming <laughs> eight, thirty yards down the field for a clothesline from behind. I mean, wait, what? Question. Yeah, I'll come for some. That's for sure. I'll be coming to whoop that ass. I mean, when you say, "Hey, we have my back," I mean, does a fat baby fart? So that's there's your answer for that. Uh, <laughs> Nineteen. This is a great look right here uh, for what we used to call it Pittsburgh Roger and Pittsburgh Louie. It's just power. It's got a P in it. It was one back power. Steel Roger, Steel Louie was two back power. Um, I just remember because I had two fucking E's in it. So word association. But the way we used to do it is we would mic it back here on gap schemes. You always mic your double team in two. So these two know to deuce back to the mic. You know, O'Leary is basically a base block. You got a, a seven, which means the guy on your inside shoulder. You got a six, got head up on your uh, uh, helmet. You got a guy on the outside of nine technique. Basically, seven, six, nine, make him a nine. If he's a seven or six, make him a nine. If he's a nine, keep him a nine. How I always used to teach it. Um, just keep it simple for the tight ends. And then right here, if you're Josue Matias, um, hell of a pulling guard, Trey Jackson was too. He actually, Trey Jackson actually ends up pulling this three technique. He whoops his ass pretty good. 
is going to have to come around and pull for the first pass play side. When I say first pass, that's the mic. That's first pass. You would tell him to block second pass. And right there, sometimes it would change probably on uh, three down fronts, which is a pain in the ass. But right here, KB is going to have to come block the corner. I think actually this corner falls in and makes the play. And uh, pretty much Jimbo loses his shit. It's pretty cool. So one of my favorite things to watch. Right here, we run a pretty good power scheme. Devontae Freeman gets yards, gets upfield, but the corner makes the play from all the way out there. This is a really good – if you can see right here, if you can see Trey Jackson, he's just folding this dude. Like, like he's got him down on his knee. Bobby does, does a good job chipping that hip and then climbing vertical to here. Nick does a good job. This dude, if he goes inside, you know what? Wash him down the line, he'll sway, pull the round, Bobby pick and hinge, beat a C gap. And then, you know, just slap that center. Just keep this dude blocked in the A gap. Don't let him make the play. But this is a really good job. But, again, you can see, like, the little things matter. Like, the little things matter to Jimbo. And then you got Kenny getting there, not scared to get stick a space in I the paint either, man. I think uh, I think this game, he's 17-7. We never really, like, I don't think we ever had any doubt that we would beat their ass, though, if, we, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean obviously it's easier to sit here and say that but yeah there's no question like i don't think we ever i don't ever remember looking around at any you guys looking in your eyes like oh yeah. i'm fucking worried like you you could always get that feeling sometimes yeah no truthfully but, and you know it's one of those honestly they off the record but it's like you'll get that feeling more so with a boston college you know one of them little trap games <laughs> oh fuck you want to talk about disgusting game yes hey. yeah boston <laughs> college that, yep. they, they 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 always have our number. They were smart. They were unbelievably smart. I think they part. they were the one of the closest teams to be as physical as you guys were during their time there. That run, they still are a big team. Do a lot of stuff in the weight room. They show they physicality strong. on the oh, field. They strong. Yeah, dude, that was yeah. Them and Florida are probably the most physical games of the year. Definitely. Uh, just wake up the next morning like that wouldn't like yeah you'd want to get hammered after kicking Florida's ass but like if you yeah. came back and beat Boston College. Dude, just keep on moving, man. You're going to feel like shit in the morning. Just move on. Are you guys coming this weekend to Tally also? No, but I will be there for the spring game with some of my buddies. Um, I'll be there. I'll be there. You come to the spring game? Yeah, I'll be there beforehand trying to golf. Nice. You golf, Kenny? Man, that's my old man sport now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, I, I would never it. thought – hey, just like how you talking about gym membership, I would never thought I picked up some clubs. <laughs> Damn, good for you, bro. I, I, that's a game I, I never could pick up. Though. Really? Got to work on your short game, huh? Man, it's a humbling sport. I just don't mm -hmm. leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Damn, it is. Uh, but to answer your question, there uh, also coming. Uh, I don't know if you remember. You, man, you might not remember these guys. Jake Stanley. Uh, uh, you remember his crazy walk on ass, and then he ended up getting a scholarship the last semester. He was an offensive lineman. I got to see his face, but. Yeah, he's, and he's then Ryan McMahon, the Ryan McMahon, who holds the like consecutive record for most starts or something like that consecutively for Florida State, and then Garrett Fairclough. I, mean, I know you remember I know Fairclough. Fairclough. Hey, that, that's my boy. Can't forget that name. Mm -mm. No, not at all. You can't forget Garrett in general. If you heard that laugh, you never forget. But uh, we're all coming through. We're going to be hopping. So if you have a tailgate going on and you guys watching uh, for the spring game. Let us know where it's at. Like, hit, you know, at me on Twitter, whatever. Or say, hey, follow me back so we can DM. And uh, let us know, man. We'll come by, say hi, have a beer with you, say what's up. And uh, we're just, you know, looking to get around and maybe get a few uh, few good clips for our show as well. And then mm -hmm. once it gets too rowdy, we'll shut off the damn camera because of course, State Sentinels, we can't let everybody know everything, right? <laughs> so. No. Can't let everything get out there. No. no yeah, that'll be on the spring game. So make sure you guys hit up Brian if you got a tailgate going, invite him. And his guys and his pals, and also if you see Kenny, are you, Kenny, are you trying to go to the game and everything? Uh, yeah. I know it's not really a game much anymore. Jimbo's was more of a game style, but Norvell runs a little bit, but just pregame and stuff. I think I ran. Did I see y'all last? Year? I think I saw you and Los. Yeah, I saw you and Los last I think year. I, I definitely saw you last year. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's like a blur sometimes. You get up that place. I know. It's so busy. And now Jimbo, it looks like he's going to kill somebody. I've seen that look quite a bit of times. Doesn't oh, matter who you are. Hey. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna 
kill someone. Oh, I hope Brian's I hope Brian's computer did not freeze because it does look it like Brian. Like it does look like Brian is in a freeze mode. Here. <laughs> He's gonna get so mad. He is going to get ticked off. But yeah, this definitely looks like Jimbo and then Dossie's over here. I love Dossie. He was Hey Dossie's just the calm. He's like a I know. peacemaker. He's a peacemaker. <laughs> yep. I, I remember being up there in the morning. This was before I was even covering Florida State or anything, but uh, so I can't, nobody can come after me then, but I was just little and I was good friends with Trey Fisher. And okay. so I'd be up there in Dossie. I'd be up there in Dossie's um, office quite a bit with baby, baby Dossie. Yeah. And we'd just be hanging, but you could just hear Jimbo just, just laying it oh, in. Nice. I think it, I think it was to, to Jameis in the, in the office. And I was like, well, um, we're just going to stay in here. And Dossie said, y'all just stay in here. Y'all play on your phones or play on the computer. If you want, uh, we, we got to go figure out what's wrong. <laughs> what's does, going um, on? does Stork do the whole game film? So he goes, he goes and clips like 25 clips. We were going to cut it off in about an hour and a half. Anyways, mm-hmm. I know that host is going to come in too. So I wouldn't, I know you got to bounce out of here too at any time. Feel free, but he he does. He'll go through and do four quarters. But first one though, we could only do maybe go into the second quarter just because there's so many <laughs> hey, things that he's got. He's got every. Hey, he's, he's got, got the low, trainers. You know, you know when you see your old boy, you be like, you can get going. That thing get elongated. You know what I mean? You be like, man. Yep, I know exactly. I only, so. went, I only went through two clips. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What well, I think. uh I think too what he does he watches a lot of these other other interviews also some other game film guys I, I don't know if you've heard of like Pat McAfee's show he does a show I, with a lot I, of his I guys. heard of, I heard of him yep and kind of that style is what we're trying to do with this show it's a little bit you know we've had you on here the spear that's more of a podcast straight podcast style this one's more of a show type genre and yeah. I think it's really cool bringing on guys like you that yeah teammates and also can talk about film also because for a guy like me i can't talk about game film yeah. this and, a, this is an old terminology it's like you know i haven't i haven't heard some of these uh layman's in probably a decade you know mm-hmm. yeah like, it's weird that i even still remember it you know yep i know and it's freaking flown by now you've got thirty thousand things going on are you so can you tell us more about the cam before i do let you go because i think yeah Brian said his internet's out, so sadly it might be <laughs> that we end things here. Oh, do a part two. We can definitely do a part yeah. two. But can you tell me about the camp a little bit? Because we do have quite a yeah. bit of people watching. I want to get enough eyes on it also. Yeah, so the camp just basically here in Orlando, I like to get guys who I've come across in my tenure of football with more more specifically like my 2013 national championship team. I like to make it a reunion. So, you know, you get guys from all over. I know – in my past, I've had guys like Dak Prescott, um, you know, Ike Taylor, some OGs. But it's just more so to motivate a kid to keep going. You know, sometimes in life, we um, as as young men, we we just need an extra push into whatever we need. And I think just seeing some guys who they've seen on TV um, or who what used to be on TV will be an extra push. And I'm just excited to have – you know, more and more people on board as far as um, what I'm trying to get across in this mission. You know what I mean? Like the Derrick Brooks, you know, some of the OGs who done it before me. And I've went to an extent to invite some UFC fighters. You know, everybody can add on to this mission. It's more than football. You know, it's it's about getting the kids somewhere in that future. Yep. I completely agree. Like I said, I was there a couple of years ago at it. Phenomenal turnout. I think that was the first one where it was that big where you invited a lot That's of your the first one. Yeah. And was a phenomenal turnout. Uh, mm-hmm. went everywhere across social media. I was, I, I was amazed at it. But then like you said too, it allows for some of those guys that you were teammates with too to they hadn't seen each other in a long time. Some after oh, the national the championship, they never saw each other. It was a reunion. And you know, um, I know afterwards some of the guys was like, man. You know, that's when we talk about life and, you know, in the sense of, Kenny, I didn't know what I wanted to do up until, you know, just seeing the guys, the youth getting something out of me just teaching them. And a lot of guys went back home and started coaching. And, you know, they they in the course of just 
you know, continue to give back to the youth, which, you know, that's what we need to do in this, in this um, life of ours, you know. 100%. So looking forward to, uh, I want to be there for that. And yeah, it's a, a sold out, it's a sold out camping, um, sold out in two days. So Whew. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's, it's just, I never thought I'd be liking doing something more than playing football. Mm -hmm. And um, as we get older and jump into parenthood, as Thorpe did in September, it's it's one of those things where we just got to continue to figure out what makes us whole. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to myself. I'll pull a damn hamstring or something right now if I did suit up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, probably so. Brian, we were just talking about his camp that he's got coming up uh always always is phenomenal and the kids love it that the happiness that i saw was was awesome because also you just see different things too from the coaches but the former players that come in and i also think it's really unique for the relationships that you've built kenny it shows how much that you care about them because they're giving back on their end and saying, yes. you know, I, I really have a, a love bond with kenny i'm gonna come travel this far away to, to yeah. a camp i always down. appreciate that it's 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 great so i I appreciate you kenny coming on here i think brian's working on the tech stuff realm i know he's about to punch don't punch it please don't punch it not today you've been doing a good job you've been doing a good job i'm so sorry it's so embarrassing i'm about to i'm not i'm on my phone right now with my internet went out so somebody's fucking with me um (laughs) So I'm about, to, I'm about to enter with this thing real quick. I know we all want to get to bed soon. So uh, just a few more clips and we'll get rolling. All right. I'll, I'll be right back. You're good. Go ahead. All right, Kenny. I'll hold things down for now until Brian gets back on. Or he's around the computer. You're but... natural. Good thing you're natural. Hey, I appreciate you, Kenny, always. I hope to see you soon also. I hope so. Be good. Take care of the family. Appreciate you hopping on here. We should have host sway here in just a few minutes. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, I've been waiting for him. I do not see it. But, uh, <laughs> He'll be here. He'll be here eventually. But uh, all right. let me uh, just, I mean, I know you got to go probably, Kenny, but I'll bring up the rest of this game film and such. And I don't know if there's any specific play you had for, there is anything for Kenny on your end, but. Yeah, Kenny, I had, I had one coming for you. Um, well, let's I see. I think it, it was talking. Get your Let's ass yeah, out of here and get you off the bed. So yeah, this is the this is my video editing machine. I'm probably showing the whole world what I'm doing, how I'm getting things done. Secrets, yeah, you're uh, giving away the secrets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is this is. I know this is like pretty lame right here, but this is this is the plan I'm thinking about. Yeah. So on all the gun runs, especially oh, when you're a gun a, pistol, what got a pass? Yeah. Awesome. You, yeah, the RPO, right? I think it's run power often. No, it's the run pass option. Um, no, it's, so. it's um, yeah, it's literally if the play the run going away from me, I have a bubble. Mm, okay. Which is which is like, if you don't know math, you are gonna suck at at playing slot receiver in Jimbo offense. So, yep. so if you got a number, uh, let's say twenty seven, seven to the left. If you don't know that, <laughs> you're gonna be in a lot of damn trouble. Damn. Ooh. Yep. So if you if you have a concussion or anything, you in trouble. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to think out there in this offense for sure. Like you can see right here, like we got the leverage for it. Um, usually, like mm-hmm. everywhere I've been, we don't throw the bubble when they're that low. But we were just so yeah. damn good on the perimeter blocking. Oh, we, we could. We, start. We had a scary number up that year. I probably generated 500 yards in bubble yards damn, damn. holy Which shit i didn't realize that. that yeah one of the little analytical uh little geeks they told me mm-hmm. about it and i was like dang like that that's how i knew that they they put in a lot of work upstairs that's why no, I appreciate they really it. did man they did not they did we, basically we had a dude named chris jacobs he was uh called rocket man he worked for the uh nasa oh rocket man his name's chris jacobs yeah it was the rocket expo- propulsion system that he worked for inter interplanetary travel is what he would like his job for nasa and then we ended up somehow he fell in our lap and we took him and he did all the gps systems for in our uh 
pads and stuff. But Damn. that's where they no found out. Sure. Yeah, Chris Jacobs, great dude. But whenever he tells somebody happy birthday, he says happy solar revolution because you passed the sun. <laughs> Uh, he's just he's kind of a nerdy dude like that but awesome awesome yeah. human being yeah I was gonna say this so. is a great job by kenny running flat and then you can see like the third dude out there they're leaving him unblocked like there's no like there's no point in blocking them right i mean yeah good luck and then kenny just gets right up the poop shoot man it's unbelievable like it's just stealing yards is what it is and you know football's kind of evolved to this um but we, we could do it all man this is a great job by kenny getting the first down what about – what are you telling KB there, too? He got his man and drove him to the sideline. Oh, he whooped that ass. Yep. You see, the, the thing about running a bubble is running it flat, right? Yeah, you don't you want see, to throw it. You want to run yeah. it flat. And you don't look right away, which is a – it's a timing thing. It's like – it's like you come off the line and just – you're like, okay. KB, Good big job by KB. You, just tr- you just trusted it, I guess. You know, big guy like that. I remember this play to Rashad. Oh man. Mm. Yeah, this was this was the touchdown. But uh, Kenny, I gotta find I gotta find the one. Didn't you go off before the half? Like you, you caught one right over the middle, man. Like you almost got killed. Oh, the half of... Those things are yeah. scary. <laughs> you held oh. on to them though. We we gotta see this guy though, right here. This is probably one of my I love the Martian Chiefs. I want to give him a shout out real quick. Uh oh, who is this? But this guy right here is having the absolute time of his life. I mean, he's – I mean, just watch this. Dude. He's, he's loving life right now. Yeah. yeah he is so happy. <laughs> I just – I love finding people that are just, like, rocking and rolling in the stands. Just he's like, he's like so out of – he's so out of character. He's like, man, I'm going to get in trouble, but <laughs> yeah. Like, here's another site right here where they bring two to one side. Um, we, we, we've talked to sites enough tonight, but I want to find the one at Kenny real quick and we'll, we'll get out of here. But uh, no, go ahead. Just bear with say, me. Was Rashad, was Rashad Green one of y'all's fastest players that year? Oh, 100%. I mean, not one of – was he the fastest? He he wasn't the fastest. We had Ronald Darby, who was an Olympian yeah. damn near. Yeah, but that's right. Rashad was definitely top three, if that. That's Don't right. Don't you some crazy well, I guess you also had Kermit, didn't you? I'm yeah. Completely forgetting that, too. Oh, shit. So, we had Bracey. Bracey won the along on that ride at the time. You remember he chose oh, he, he chose a track. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. He had already left? Oh, after the spring game, yeah. I think yeah. After the spring game, he figured that out. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm sure Jimbo gave him this look right here. The crazy eyes, right? Look at that shit. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> look at that. Dude, the, some of the Good. looks he would give you, woo, Man. Uh, right? Just pierce right through your soul. But, yeah, I, I keep scrolling through. I need to find this one of Kenny's. I get him. Probably want to put your kids to bed. Hey, Stork, how, uh, how um, easy were those two-minute drills in the game based off how hard it was in practice? The two minute drills? Oh my God. Man, you remember we hated Thursdays because we knew no matter how good a week was before, we was gonna have to do it. Oh, no question. I mean well, eventually was gonna about, I'm talking about championship week. We full pass doing a two minute drill. Two minutes. Zimbo, yes. Zimbo. <laughs> y'all did that in Pasadena or after in, y'all in Pasadena. Jesus. I think yeah, I still remember it. Like, yeah, it was our last thing we ever did. Right? Full pass. <laughs> You're not going. Yeah, full I remember. Contact, it. Right. We had like a five man box. And we ended up trying to run the damn ball or something. Or I don't even know what we tried to fucking. You're do. going full contact. Y'all aren't going full contact, right? Jeez. It was in. I, I it was in shell. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We. Woo. If we could go contact, we did. Uh, I don't know. You remember Trevor Moad? You know he passed away, Kenny. Yeah, I know Trevor. Man, rest in peace. It's man. crazy. So Trevor's our our mental conditioning coach, whatever you want to call. It. But the dude yeah. would just say some like random crazy shit. I love his energy and enthusiasm, but he wasn't around all the time. He would say some shit on game day, and it's like, what the fuck did you just say, dude? Man, like, hey, right Stork, here, this, this is Trevor. Stork, uh, Stork that's what he said one time. Rest in peace to him again. We was getting ready for um. I don't know what game it was. It was I remember it was in Orlando for the Notre Dame game oh, for the shit. Champ Sports Bowl. And yep. Trev was like, 
Hey, Kenny, do it for the 954. Do it for the – I'm like – and I like, I stopped and I said, bro, I'm from – I'm from here. I'm from 407. Like, he'll be screaming at the top of his lungs. And Jerry Hankins thought it was so funny. Like, he said he was talking shit the whole year. That's hilarious. That is funny, too. Uh, funny. 407, dude. <laughs> yeah, wrong, wrong zip code. My favorite Trip. those. Look at him. Look at him. Watch. No, watch this. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's God bless amazing. him, man. Hope, hope he's enjoying his life up there. But you can see in the back right here, everybody's just hey, talking shit. Hey, J-Mo talking shit. Whole <laughs> field, Red, Keith Weeks. Old Red's itching to have a little fun right here. And Sterling oh Lady back here. Keith we- hey, Keith Weeks was the h- most hilarious old lineman there was. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. He didn't man. know how funny he was. <laughs> and you got Miles Davis over there, too. A lot, a lot of good people in here. Um but I, I just thought that that was hilarious. I, I had to show that. I spent a lot of time making that cut up. But Kenny, I got to find the damn one of you. It's before the half. I know that for sure. Yeah, it's coming up. <laughs> There's a squinting. They're going to squint. The infamous oh. squint. There's the meme. The infamous squint right here. <laughs> Two bunch, right? What is it? What's going on? Two Roger. Two Louie. You can see Randy. I think he's going. He's going the right bunch or something. Z what? See him signal in the back. I do see it now. Right there. I think it was some kind of just it was like two Roger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Z snag Z whip something like that. I don't, I can't tell what he's saying. Kenny's trying to figure out what's going on too. At the bottom, he's got it though. I think you had a whip down there. Yeah, Ooh. they 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 try to sneak. That's the thing with our often they sneak Mitch 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 matches. Like that's what you love. Like everybody in different places. Yeah, like if you're good at this. And what happened here? Who? Oh no! This route on this concept, you go there. Did Kenny freeze up? Nope, we're back. Nope. Yes, we're good. Right here, we got to throw the flat route to, out here to Chad Abrams, man. Like this is the only way we can get it yeah. out. He was he was like, looking for it. something. He was looking for a Leary look like. This looks like snag to me, but like, or no, the Z's whipping. Kel- uh, Kelvin's whipping. This is interesting, like snag ish, but it's not because you know you got the flat, you got the flag or the clear out, but I don't know. Not really for sure which one that was. This has got to be it, Kenny. I think this is the yeah, hash read. Second hash 29. Read. Yep, this is Seattle. Dang. And, dude, I don't even know if you should have got the ball. I feel like one of the comebacks, if they actually ran a comeback, that, that probably is the throw here. But, like, the, the window that James is about to fit this in, and then you just having the courage to, like, try to get over there and get it and snap Man. it. Because, like, too high safety. You got so much. It. Like, you got – it's like you got to have – the biggest balls. You know when he, you know when James is coming to you, honestly. It's like a weird energy you get when you have the hash read and you like say if it's if you look at all our film when it's that deep, like the Florida game, it was third and what 36. You yeah. know when James is coming to you. He's fixing you to put on a you, fucking tight You rope. just gotta put on your jock strap or something and buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no question. I mean Dude, Kenny, there's so many shots that like that I found. There's a, a couple of them in here, man. Like you just going over the middle and having the courage to catch that ball. Like that, there's something to be said for that. And like you gotta have like that fuck it gene in your in your in your brain to be able to like go out and do that. Us O linemen, we just fight in a phone booth, but what you guys do out there is uh some good shit. And right here, that we just this is disaster. This fucking slap dick center. I tell you what, he sure sucks ass. You watch too much film and start seeing go. <laughs> And started thinking there was going to be a blitz here, but it really it was a blitz, but it wasn't. And where they catch us, then seventy protections, or really seven man protection, is where if you that's zero, and this is an N, that's an N. This is one, two, three, one, two, three. He's going to have three. O'Leary's going to have three to this side. Basically, the guard has one. The guard has one. Tackles have two. Tackles have two. Now they start to drop. They get around different spots. Um, you know, whoever's the most dangerous one and two. 
we'll go ahead and take them to the old line. And then if you're a running back or an H in the protection, seven man protection, you go ahead and get on your check down to uh, hold those underneath the fenders. But uh, this right here, I think I'm about to get a Will Mike Cross. I let the freaking nose guard go, but dude, Kenny, I mean, you just you just make a great catch right over the middle. Um, unbelievable throw. They bring oh, wow. basically a stall inside to Sam and Will uh, from the outside edges, and uh, they get us pretty good. Damn. But it, it, so O'Leary should be getting this backer blitzing from the boundary number twelve, and then right here Cam should be locked on the end. They just sees it late, but it's a good job by just Kenny and and Jameis being on the same page and. Kenny having the courage to go over the middle and, you know, really get Man, that. Look at that score going to the hat, going to the third quarter. The what? <laughs> look at that score. Oh, yeah. I know. It's crazy. Y'all weren't expecting that. Mm -mm. It's unbelievable. And then we saw Kenny yeah. Hunter going to the half, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's we've had a few of y'all. I mean, we obviously you, Kenny, multiple times, mm -hmm. but the locker room – I've heard different perspectives on it, but overall, a lot of confidence in there. A lot of like, we're not done yet. Still, things got to be finished. Oh, here's yada, yada, yada. One, Kenny. This is a, I was hoping Josue oh, would be on this with me, but Kenny, this is another route I want to ask you about here in a second. Uh, but this, it's so loud right now. This is a moment I'll never forget with Josue right here. We're in 2011 after the Champs Bowl there, Kenny. Remember down in the lobby after we won? We went down to the uh, the hotel bar and we were playing pool and, like, all these yeah. rando people were hanging around us. There were some that Spanish ladies. Some Spanish lady that kept saying, holy shit, holy shit, just over and over and over. And Josue, ever since then, every anytime someone got crazy, he'd just be like, holy shit. Josue literally <laughs> turns to remember that. Moment. He, yeah, he turns to me in this moment and says, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and we're just both is that what he's saying. This is loud. I mean, this it, it's third and twelve, and we've been four for six on third downs this far. So, like, they're cranking it up. So, right here, I think uh, coming up, Kenny. I think this is like a. Uh, I guess you would have been playing the Z here because you're outside of KB, but like a Z yep. short motion and running Pam sit or something like this. Where yeah, uh, like, this, I think I do like a um. I do almost like a, a route pick, but I can't make it look like a rub. I mean, like an actual pick. Yeah. Yeah. You got like the, I think you have the inside post of the Pam part, right? Yeah. Double post. And it's crazy because you do, like, usually you go under the Sam and over the mic to, like, and then cross yeah. the safety space. But what you did was really fucking good here. You this didn't one, go. Yeah. This one was all week. It was. It was said to me like I can't actually put hands on him, but I have to make it seem like a. I have to make him go underneath for it. I got to rub it somehow. You did a good job of going on his outside shoulder, which usually you don't do. But they go Tampa two here, and you yeah. kind of take him with you a little bit, and you open up that sit uh, window for Jameis right there. I mean, look at that window right there. That's awesome. And I'll show you the back end real quick. Short motion. What I love is like, like you said, it's like a rub route. But it, yeah. did y'all call it Pam or no? Did y'all call it something else? It was Pam. It was Pam. Okay. See, I'm getting on the same page, Kenny. Shit, this is awesome. Though you end up taking him with you. He's on. He's a cover two safety. He's so deep. He's playing Tampa, and then as KB sits here and brings it back down the flat route, you put him in a bind. Like there's a beautiful throwing lane. So like even though you're not getting the ball when you're receiver. Like yeah. you're still helping your team out just from running the you know running the route properly. Like I'm not telling you anything new there, Kenny. But I just thought this is a really great shot. Just of, of Kenny doing her job, everybody doing their jobs, blocking. You know, I, right here I think he gets smacked um, by the end here. But it's just a great job by the you know the receivers getting the ball out and you know catching it. Quarterback getting the ball out and receivers catching it. But uh, that's, man, it's really that, good shit. Look at that beautiful old line, man. Yeah, we, we we were a ragtag group, man, but we, we ended up getting it done. But, he, you know. Anyway, I know we all get to get to bed, but there's a bunch of clips on here. I can go forever. I could par probably post the uh, the rest Do of you, them. You, can, you, can you take us to the Nick O'Leary stiff arm on Travis Blanks? Do you have that on you? Yeah, here? we can end it on guys. that. Yeah, well, fuck yeah. I mean, there's a fat baby for it. That that might be our best way. I don't know if he does so much social media, but we'll we'll clip up our reaction to that and see if we'll get him on this show eventually. I know it's going to take this a lot one needs to be talked cans. about too, though. This is an art. 
I'll do this one, then I'll do the O'Leary one. This is an art right here, the the Raven and Lark screens. And it's not so much the O-line. Um, it's really the receivers. And if you're the guy running the tunnel, that it's it's a bitch. But especially from a reduced set like this set is. Uh, but if you look at it, sorry. It's, it's a tough look, but we end up getting it out. And this, and this play would hardly ever score. And last time we scored on this, the Florida State scored on this play was in 2008 – when like Daco, Zebra Sanders, David Spurlock, damn, uh, I remember, McMahon, I remember those guys. Rodney Hudson, it was yeah, it was like it was Spurlock and then his true freshman year, and they scored on this play, and it's like in the same spot. I think it's on the same hash in the red zone on the right hash, and they scored on it in Doke, because uh, there for a while I had a conspiracy theory that they scored in uh, 09 uh, versus this, or oh, yeah, it would been 09, I think, but they didn't. It was 08 at Doke. But this is a really good play by uh, by Rashad. And then, Kenny, you do a hell of a job, too, just collecting this dude. I think it's ends up being the corner. But, like, what Kenny's going to go do is kind of hard. They, they would be so confused when we'd be uh, stacked close. It, and yeah, think. they didn't know if you were running switch verts, right? Yeah. That, that's, that's a beautiful thing, man. And you guys did a good job when you all come off the ball. Or, like, you guys would stay vertical for a little bit before you guys would ever make a move, you know? So they don't know if you're about to switch it or do what. So I always thought that was really good by you guys. But, Kenny, you do a hell of a job collecting this corner. And then Rashad runs like basically like just a reverse angle yeah, coming reverse through angle. here. Tackle sets him. Tackle sets him. Get him upfield. Cut him. Get his hands down because we're throwing the ball over here. Sprint out. I'm sure backside they probably told you what, just run off, block third yeah, level. Yeah, just run off. Just run yeah. off. And it's, the, um, it's a receiver screen, really. Yep. Beautiful thing. You set, set punch, release. Block the first dude that shows is going to be him. Set punch release. Don't block a blitzer from depth. If he walks up on the line of scrimmage, block him. If not, go ahead and get out. He's going to drop out here. Host way, set that three technique. Get out, clean up. And then right here, we're going to set it. There's a lot of yellow up there. But it's just a beautiful thing. Like, there was no better feeling because we tried for years to score on this play, and we finally got it. Everybody just throwing. Like, we didn't block it perfectly, but we made people miss. Host way gets that last dude. Rashad gets in there. Mm -hmm. But really, Kenny, it all started with you, man. So, I mean, it's just a great job just, you know, party in the end zone because we all did our jobs and we all took pride in that. Um, we didn't give a shit, like you said, who was eating, who was scoring. I, I think we all – this year we all won each other awards. We all won each other, you know, us I thought to block that line, but he was strong as shit. <laughs> who? That was Whoever a linebacker. That hey, he was strong as shit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> See if you can yeah, pencil right. him down up there. He? DB something. That's a great job, though, just collecting them. And the big thing is, Kenny, you don't want to get beat where? Inside. Yeah, over the top. You want to make them go around. And it was, it was just like those simple little things you can give buzzwords to position players and stuff like that just as a coach just to help them learn. And it's amazing how you can recite this shit years later down the road. But, I mean, this is just an awesome play. Everybody just – you know, we didn't even like – it was back in the day when you could cut too. And we just made people just jump out of the way. So there's that play, Kenny, absolutely just fucking awesome getting the play started there. And then real I quick, really I know I keep saying I'm going to be done. But. Kenny, so you were in the weight room. You were in the weight room with Vic. Oh, you got damn right. You held your own, baby. Hey, talking about? I, always, I always work with vengeance. You know, they think I'm small, but I got to show them something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's crazy ass Timmy. Oh, God. Kicking the shit out of the Clemson Center. Imagine that. Who would have thought it? Glad it wasn't me. What uh, is that? Punt return? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Speaking of, Kenny Shaw. Hey, there's a game we used to play growing up. I can't say it on, on live air, but I'm pretty sure what? you played the same game. <laughs> Tackle the man with the ball, right? Like any man. <laughs> Remember the guy who ever has the ball? Tackle the man with the ball? I think you played this because right here, you're just making everybody freaking miss. Like, they can't corral your ass. Ooh, that cut right there is nasty. Bro, I do not I mean, remember dude. any of this shit. You don't remember that shit? <laughs> no, but it, I feel sexy right now. I'm going to go downstairs <laughs> and kiss my girl and my baby because I feel sexy just looking at that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that cut's disgusting, man. I do not remember this at all. That, I, we getting old, Stork. Uh, I think so. That is for sure. A <laughs> couple of gray hairs in the beard, you know? But I just thought this is a hell of a run by you, man. Right. Like, have a show. Bang. Got to show right it there. Off. That was Humphreys who was after you, too, and that was a damn good wide receiver Clemson had. 
but you showed him who was a real athlete at wide receiver. Vic, boy, hey, look There's at Vic. Mouth full of dick. see that tweet I put out? <laughs> I wear my sunglasses at night. There's an old 80s song right there. I think they're prescription, honestly, but I love giving them shit for this. Like, dude, it's <laughs> fucking dark out, man. Get some prescription, like, normal glasses, all right? Like, they were not prescription. I, I'm not going for that. <laughs> Unbelievable. I thought it was funny as shit wearing your sunglasses at night. But uh, I'm all, I, I'm almost through the whole cut up shit. Let me find uh, let me find a Leary special right here. <laughs> uh, Jen Jen be. is asking here on YouTube if we'll do a NC State game one eventually. Maybe so. Maybe oh, so. Dude, we're, we're... 2013 one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's dude, one we're gonna watch. No, out. no, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Those are beer goggles. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to drink that game pretty. That's for sure. It's coming, boys. Just bear with me. Oh, oh this right dead. here is... Uh, no, no Jang is dead. Yeah, I know. Somebody is drunk and stumbling past him, but the way he just, like, stayed so composed, like, it, this isn't Jameis, just, like, Jameis dad, you know what I'm saying? Just watching yeah. his, like, mannerisms. Dude's right here is just going right by him. Mr. Antonio. Watch this. <laughs> and then another guy, I don't know if y'all recognize this dude, another parent in the stands. This is uh this is O'Leary's dad right there doing the doing the uh null chop. That and, is uh, I don't know if y'all know him. Yeah, look at look at that face. I don't, I, it's crazy they found him, right? It's crazy. It's just Damn. a small world. Last breakdown I did, I found Reuben Carter at the Oklahoma Bowl game in the Cheez-It Bowl, uh, Kenny. Man. I found hey, Reuben I Carter saw, sitting in the stands. I, I saw him, too. You saw him down there at the Cheez-It Bowl? Yeah. When I walked on the field, I saw him in the stands. And oh. Yeah, he was in the end zone, I think. That's where Brian found him. Speaking of, Mr. O'Leary, here is your, uh, your son right here. About to whoop that ass. O'Leary got like hawk hunting strength. He does, man. I once watched him bite the head off of a rabbit when it, like, yeah. So it's a pretty incredible human being right there. Kind of freaked me out a little bit, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> you know how we get, you know, out there getting crazy and we were shooting hogs and oh man, like, hey, he, that dude is strong. That's why I wasn't surprised at this. Mm. I mean, look at that. My God. And my favorite is he stands up and like without giving everybody the bird in the stadium that that oh that, that punk ass walk that O'Leary does like you know what I'm yeah about? Look, look, at right here. look at the arms caught yeah look at the arms the T Rex arms <laughs> <laughs> but this is a great catch by him man just knocking the shit out of people boom just over I, I got it kind of over it's a little choppy it was smooth earlier before the Wi Fi decided to shit itself I but think that moment that moment was where they. They lay down at, at that point. Yeah. We can do whatever and we then, want it to do. This guy right here in the back, uh, the DC. This <laughs> is now Hostway's <laughs> ball. So it's, probably, it's probably good Hostway's not on here right now. So, but yeah, man. That's the Brent point. Venables. Brent Venables yep. got a first, first look at that hit. Right on the sidelines, man. That was just ridiculous. I remember being up there, all the way up there. I was looking down from that angle, and woo! Once that happened, I think you saw that crowd just say, "But I think even Rashad Green's that touchdown there earlier that we showed probably put that crowd night night because y'all put him to sleep." And I think too, Kenny, and for both y'all, but for a lot of y'all, when you were going for those catches, Kenny, like you, you practiced against it. And I know you wouldn't be full crazy on contact or maybe I don't know, but you also wouldn't have LaMarcus Joyner behind you. So like worst case scenario, you've already faced, you already faced LaMarcus daily in practice. So then when it goes to a game, you're like, well, I mean the worst case scenario, maybe he's, he, he, there's no way you're going to, you're going to be better than LaMarcus Joyner. And yeah. kind of have the best. And it's, it's the whole, it's the whole look and Stork will back me up on this. Um, Jimbo would be frustrated some instances because we would have off scripted uh, periods where Jimbo called his best and Pruitt called his best. And those periods were what made us champions. I would, I would really say because 
we'll see some looks that, you know, at the end of the day, the Aussie would keep it real and be like, hey, you're not going to see no look like that on game day. But yep. which made you feel better because it's like, man, they they got us today. Yeah, rule breaker. Like, what's he say? They, they would just give you the put you in spots where you had to break your rules. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. You guys. I don't want to. We won't stay here any much longer because we're going to wrap things up real quick. But I think just off the topic of competition, Florida State's bringing back a lot of guys this season. Mm-hmm. NIL, NIL helps. There was no NIL back then, but now you have NIL and you're bringing back. Uh, Fabian Lovett on defensive tackle side of things, and you've got your wide receivers. But any any thoughts on the 2023 team here? Asking Carol from Facebook. What you got, Kenny? I think they looking pretty damn good. Um, I like our hopes going into this year. Um, name of the game is consistency. So, you know, we can hype them up. We can have all the hopes, but we I we got to see game one in Orlando. Mm-hmm. Yep. My, my whole thing is, too, like, I've noticed, like, everybody in the media saying, oh, hey, like, all these guys look promising first day. I'm like, all right, don't ever don't get too fucking excited, okay? So are you coming after my tweets, Brian? You're coming after no, me? I'm not. You should have no, now. No, you're no, subtweeting no, live. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. like, don't get caught up in what you're seeing. Like, you're in fucking jerseys. And, like, yeah, it's like the combine thing. Like, let, let's wait till it's like, okay, cool, first day of pads, great. You're going to see some cool shit. Let's see him in yeah. two weeks. Same thing with, like, like fall camp. How are yeah. we really gonna look when everybody feels like shit? That's what I want to know. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, like you, like you said, there's like a lot of dudes coming back. Obviously, we played in the wrong area. I used to get free beer and not have to wait in line at the bar at the strip. Whatever, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> um, it is what it is. But maybe I get some more free beer when I go back this spring. But uh, anywho, I, there's a lot of good guys coming back. There's a lot of competition, and uh, transfer portals really changed a lot. And they're getting transfers in. But I, like I said before. I think they do a really good job of doing their homework because it, it's hard to get a transfer as a coach. Cause I've been there to make sure he's the right guy. He's the right fit. Talk to the right people, learn, you know, all their backgrounds and like all the issues they could possibly have, but they've done a great job. And, you know, if they just stay consistent, like Kenny said, stay healthy. I wish there was a lot of, there's some dudes on that list. That I would like to see be healthy, but I get shit happens. Yeah. Um, after the season, you just, it is what it is. I missed my last season of Matt drills too. Um, um, lucky it was able to get them back in spring, but it's tough. But I think they got, you know, a long way to go, but I don't think it's as far as they think either. You know what I mean? You always have a long way to go. That's the champion. That's the fighter. And you always got a long ass fucking way to go. Um, but if they, if they keep that mindset, like we're never good enough, like the way we had it, I think they'll be pretty damn good. Um, and obviously one team, one heartbeat fight for each other. Right. Like mm-hmm. that was our saying. Goddamn right. Mm-hmm. Yep, We believe that shit. So still do. Feel like a Navy SEAL when we used to say that shit, you know? Right, like you couldn't bust through us, man. You were just, Felt you like were gonna, either, yeah, we were gonna fucking kill you, or we were gonna kill you. Either way, we were gonna win. So, <laughs> well, we'll see what ends up happening in 2023. Season's coming soon. We got spring camp going on, but this is gonna wrap up episode two, our deep dive into Florida State versus Clemson. That rewind in 2013, fun game. Kenny, appreciate you coming on to. Our show here, Brian, as always, does a phenomenal job at having you two give your insight at the wide receiver position. A whole variety of other things was fantastic. And spending two hours with us, that's – I can't – I always talk highly of Kenny. You, Los, a lot of guys that always hop on here whenever I try to ask or get some crazy things going on, you all always usually will, will buy into it. So I appreciate you, Kenny, as always. And, uh, yeah, this will wrap up episode two. Brian, any last words on your end? Kenny, I appreciate you, man. It's it's uh, probably definitely one of my favorite receivers. You you always always come by and fuck with the O line, and I uh, really appreciate you, man. And uh, we got to catch up. Hope maybe come down to your camp at some point. I don't know if I'll be able to come this year, but I'd love to come by and chat and you know hang out. And if I can see hey, the regards, spring game, let's, I'll let's see link you in the up. spring game. Let's lock it yeah. in. Yeah, let's grab a couple cold ones and and catch up. Maybe you could run around with us and make some content and you know mingle with some Florida State alum and people and. Uh, but again, I you know you're a dad now. It takes a lot of time. I'm figuring that out as well. So really appreciate your time. And uh, hey. Logan, as always, appreciate you, you know this opportunity to be on here. Um, you know, go Knowles, go Jesus. I used to say that after every shot I ever took. Um, I'll say that again, man. Go Knowles, go Jesus. Hey, y'all have a good night, man. I'll see y'all soon. Yeah, man. See you, brother. <laughs>